Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is a story about what if Deku became a hero without a quirk part 1. If you guys enjoy this what if and want to see part 2 comment down below and let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also share this video with your friends and check out the description in my playlist so let's start the video. The past, failures and becoming a hero, awakening the next morning early Saturday. After the assessment test, Izuku carefully and quietly packed his bag. Yesterday he had failed the test and was told politely that without a quirk he just could not be a hero. That he knew was untrue. The dream he had was more like a vision. He had seen in the dream and man without a quirk had become a hero unlike any have been and for Izuku it was going to be the same for him. Heading down to the beach, he began to move the junk and debris off it, lifting and heaving, building up his muscles. He had only three hours and then he needed to arrive at the dojo. After two and a half hours, he removed his gi from his bag and put it on. Not caring if anyone saw him remove the dirty sweats and put on the white gi uniform, lacing the white belt around him, he ran to the dojo. Three months later he was a black belt in karate, beating the instructor. Now it was time to find another dojo that taught judo. After intense study he became a black belt in judo, again defeating the instructor. Standing on the balcony of his mother's and Izuku's apartment he flexed his arms. Cleaning the beach had increased his muscles and his self-defense training had made him able to somewhat defend himself, but he knew he was still lacking. At most he could take on low-level quirk muggers or criminals, but he would have to have other skills and knowledge if he was to become a hero, knowing that he needed to think he headed for the beach. Not there was anything else to do there. He had removed all of the junk last weekend and now it was just as clean as it was in the past. Walking down the sand barefoot he grimaced. I had a lose on what I can do. Izuku muttered as he gazed across the sands out to the sea. Excuse me young man, I am trying to paint and you are blocking me. An old woman said from the sidewalk several meters away. Izuku shrugged and moved away so the old woman could continue painting. Thank you, she said as he moved over to see her painting. Was it not nice that someone cleaned this place? She added as she brushed paint across the canvas. Izuku looked at the painting and winced. The old woman saw his expression and scowled. Painting is not a quirk you know, it is from within. She stated putting down the brush. I would not know about that. I cannot paint and I do not have a quirk. Izuku related as he sat down on the sidewalk and exhaled, closing his eyes, unsure what to do. Then why are you training so hard? The old woman asked. Master Nuro and Master Jinji state that you have been obsessed with training in both of their dojos and you beat them both. She said with a smile seeing him stare at her with shock. Oh they are my sons so I find it interesting that someone who only just started learning from them beat them. So answer my question. Why are you training so hard? She asked glaring at him. He shrugged. It was a stupid dream or vision I had after failing my entrance exam into UA. I saw someone that did not have any powers or quirks become a real hero. So I thought I could do it. Izuku stated as he looked back at the sea. I know I am lacking something, but I do not know what. He said with exasperation. The old woman laughed and shook her head. Stand up. The old woman ordered him and she stood as well. Then walked over to the beach. Come and let me see what skills you possess. She moved her hands to her sides and then brought them up in a classic fighting stance. Izuku laughed and shook his head. You cannot be serious, mom. I have no intention of fighting an old woman. Izuku stated and the old woman laughed as well. Then moved so fast that Izuku only saw a blur. She grabbed his shirt front and threw him several meters over her. A fighting throw unlike any judo move he had ever seen. Standing up, he stared at the old woman in shock. Then shook his head. So your quirk is speed. The old woman laughed. No, I am like you young man, I am quirkless. She noticed his expression on what she had just done without a quirk. What do you think my sons learned martial arts from someone else? But I only taught them karate and judo. Not what I know. They do not possess the spirit to learn. Now let me see your skill, the old woman demanded. He nodded and within 30 seconds he was on his back. Not bad, you do have spirit and some skill, but you need more to do what you want. She turned and rubbed her wrinkled chin. Then with reluctance she turned. I will teach you, though once you begin you cannot quit. She demanded and then laughed. Who are you? Izuku asked as he looked at the old woman. She smiled. Natsumaki Kini, but from now on I am your master. Now let us start right now. Kini said and he began to learn a style of fighting that he suspected no one else alive knew but her. Though she told him that the monks of Shangri-La had perfected what she was teaching him decades ago and it is the ultimate fighting style. Two months more had passed and Izuku collapsed onto his bed with exhaustion. Matsumaki Kini had basically beat the shit out of him for the past two months and now he was beginning to feel it. She threw him around like he was a novice and it was starting to annoy him. But he also knew that he was getting better and faster. It took her longer to toss him about. On the third month, she slouched and shook her head. Damn, Izuku Midori you are too obsessed. You have learned what took me half my life to learn in such a short amount of time. Soon you will have the skills that you will need. Natsumaki said with aggravation and with pride. 
but I feel like something is still lacking, master, Izuku said and Natsumaki knew the answer. She pulled out five metal spikes that were about the size of darts. With a flick of her wrist she sent one into a nearby soda can, pinning it against a wooden post. This is the other skill you need, Izuku. But like the style I taught you, this must also be learned, Natsumaki stated and she handed him the darts, then taught him how to use other items that would help him become a hero unlike any before. Smoke bombs, flash bombs and the use of bolos, each skill Izuku mastered. One month later, she stood before him, looking up at him. Tonight will be your first test. You will go out and patrol the city. Use your skills that I taught you. She declared handing him a hood and black pants and shirt. A belt with pouches held three smoke bombs and three flash bombs. Sets of five spikes were sheathed on both wrists. A bolo hung from his side and the ropes tucked securely in a pouch. Nodding he put on the hood. Racing across the rooftops, Izuku bounded from one building to another. It felt glorious to be moving across the roofs, keeping to the shadows. Then he spotted a group of three thugs, cornering a woman. They were demanding that she hand them her purse and each had a minor quirk. The lady's quirk was also minor and he knew that she needed help. Sliding down the side of the building, he rebounded off he wall and then bounced off another, landing behind them. One of the three thugs spun and started to laugh. On the ground, put your hands above your heads. Izuku ordered them and the other two thugs gestured towards him and laughed loudly. Get a loud of this asshole. The largest thug boasted as his fingernails grew to long metal blades. Leave little man before I gut you. The man stated and moved towards Izuku, then slashed at him. Izuku caught the man's wrist and moved it upwards, then kicked the man in the left knee. The man began to fall in with a spin. Izuku sent the man across the alley into a nearby wall. Before the other two could react, Izuku was upon them and within 20 seconds both were on the ground unconscious. Then with a nod, Izuku was climbing the wall of the building and was gone. The woman stared at her savior with shock. Returning to Natsumaki's building, he slouched and then told her about the encounter. Night of the Owl, sounds like you had a good night. Natsumaki said as Izuku shook his head. What is wrong? She asked. They were not afraid of me. In the vision or dream, criminals were afraid of the hero. I need that to also be completely effective. Izuku stated and began to try to remember why the criminals were afraid of that hero. Standing at the window he noticed a owl sitting on a perch. Then it swooped down and caught a flying bat. The owl moved with such speed and grace it made Izuku's eyes widen. That is it. I need to look primeval. A creature of the night that swoops down and cascades fear upon them. He said and Natsumaki nodded. I understand and I know someone that could make you what you need. Natsumaki said and then picked up her phone. Speaking in a language Izuku could not understand, she then smiled. Have you thought of a name for this persona yet? She asked and he shook his head. I think Alman would be appropriate. That made him smile. Though at first he was thinking Batman, but decided that Alman was better. After all the bat had become the owl's prey just now. So being a knight and shadow hunter was far better. Two nights later, he stood in front of a mirror and put on the custom. It was black and had reinforced joints and padded knuckles with hard plastic enforcement. The whole custom was made of leather with plastic enforced chest and back panel. He could move easily and then he put on the mask. It had red lens that made his eyes look menacing and to top it all off he wore a cape that looked like the wings of an owl. Turning Natsumaki gasped and stepped back. Lords of heaven, she said with astonishment. If I did not know it was you, I would think you were some type of demon. She said with awe. That is what I am going for, Izuku said in a harsh tone that made his voice sound just as menacing as the uniform. Raising his hands, he stared at the metal-like claws on the tips of his fingers. Natsumaki stepped closer, pointing to the claws. Shatashashi made those, it is titanium, to help you climb better. And Tasumaki told him, nodding. Izuku now almond strode to the window. Opening it he jumped out. Taking hold of his cape in both hands he looked like a bird of prey descending upon the nearby roof. Then he slipped away into the night. An hour later Alman found his first victim, a mugger that used a knife to pull an unsuspecting man into a dark alley. Before the mugger could stab the man, Alman dropped down onto him. Slapping the knife away he hauled the mugger towards the wall and slammed him against it. Leave, Alman said to the man that stared at him with fear. Then Izuku turned his attention to the mugger. Tell your friends about me. Tell them that Alman will take your souls. Before he could say more the mugger fainted, turning towards the man, who still stood there staring at him with shock and fear. Izuku stepped backwards and disappeared into the shadows. Then the man sprinted away. A few minutes later the police arrived. The mugger was awake and he was babbling. I am telling you, there is a creature out here. The mugger said his eyes glancing about in fear. Detective Tsukachi pulled up and stepped out of his patrol car. He heard the mugger and he scoffed. What type of creature? Tsukachi asked and the mugger shook his head. Then another man stepped closer. He is telling the truth sir. Whatever it was saved me from him. The man said as he pointed towards the mugger. Sukachi gave a soft chuckle and then asked what this supposed creature looked like. 
Both the criminal and the man described this almon as some type of demon monster that had glowing red eyes and the mugger was convinced it was a vampire. Then to Tsukachi's dismay three more sightings of almon had been made. Getting into his car, Tsukachi drove to the one person that could tell him what was going on. Parking his car, he entered the residence of Tashinori Yagi, otherwise known by few as All Might. After telling All Might about this almon, Tsukachi frowned. Whoever this almond is he is effective. I have three other sightings just tonight and all of the criminals that he caught and tied are stating it is some type of demon from hell. He told Tashinori and the skinny man smiled. At home Izuku slipped into his room and removed his uniform, hiding it inside his mattress so that even by accident his mother would not be able to find it. Laying down he smiled. Four different encounters and the muggers and criminals he had encountered were afraid of him, so much so that they actually panicked. One of them had run into a nearby dumpster, knocking himself unconscious. All in all Almond was effective. One week later, the sightings of Almond was now well known by the media and they were reporting on his activities. With a lightened heart and mind, Izuku went to tell Natsumaki about his most recent bout at night. But all he found was a note. Take care Izuku, remember to practice and hone your skills. My job is done and now it is time for you to do yours. Natsumaki, he read it twice more and exhaled, deciding to see if her sons knew where she went only to find out that both were not brothers and they had no idea who Natsumaki was. When he went to ask Shatashashi, the middle-aged woman just smiled and shrugged her shoulders, telling him if he needed repairs or replacement uniforms to give her a call. One day later, using his clawed fingers Izuku now Almon slide down the wall of the building. A young girl, not really much older than him was brandishing a metal bar at two men. Both were laughing as she swung the bar back and forth. Ah oh, come on baby, one of the men said as he ducked under the bar and smiled evilly. Stop playing hard to get. The man grabbed the bar and it melted in his touch. The other moved forward and the girl pulled another bar out of her chest and swung it at the other man. Izuku smirked, the girl had spirit, but no real skill. Landing silently behind the two men, he moved with stealth and no one saw him standing in the shadows. I do not think she wants to play with you, Almond said as he moved into the dim light of the alley. But if you want to play I am sure I can accommodate you. Both men turned and their eyes widened. Holy shit you are fucking real. One of the men said with fear, stepping back and suddenly with a grunt slammed to the ground. The girl had struck him with the metal bar across the head. The other did not know what to do. His buddy laid on the ground and before him was a demon. So he did the only rational thing, he ran away. With a small chuckle that sounded worse than what he intended, because he noticed the girl held the bar threateningly at him. Folding his wing cape around him, Izuku stepped back slightly. Do not fear, I will not hurt or harm you. If you alright then I will be off. He said and the girl dropped the bar and he got a good look at her. He knew why the two hoodlums were after her, she was gorgeous. He was thankful his special lenses did not let her see him staring at her. Before he made a fool of himself or that of Almond, he moved back more into the shadows. No wait, the girl said as she stepped closer. Thank you, she said and he gave her a slight bow. And with another step disappeared into the shadow and climbed up the wall, mounting the roof and with a final wave to her left to finish his patrol. The UA Class 1A for Momo Yeirazu it took a lot for her to feel flustered or be at a lose for words. But as she described what had happened last night, she could not completely express herself. Oh it sounds like Momo has the hots for a demon. Mina said teasingly as Ijiro and Toru chuckled at the small jest. If you saw him, you would be flustered too. He was fucking amazing. Both of the idiots that tried to do whatever to me were scared to death of him and he did not even do anything. Momo stated and her three friends stopped smiling and laughing at her. Before she could say more, Mr. Aizawa entered. Miss Yeirazu please go to the principal's office. Shoto Aizawa ordered and she stood and bowed, then headed for the principal's office. Once inside the office, she say Principal Nezu, All Might, Midnight and a man she suspected was a police officer. Since he had badged her suspicions were spot on. Miss Yeirazu, I am Police Detective Tsukachi. I understand you were accosted last night by two men and Alman made an appearance. Can you tell me about this Alman? Tashinori asked and Momo told him all about what had happened. The detective was somewhat impressed as he scribbled on his notepad. The young girl had provided a great amount of detail. One question Miss Yeirazu. Did he use some type of quirk during or after he was there? Midnight asked and Momo shook her head. Not that I saw. Though he did not do much, but step out of the shadows and scare the two idiots. I think they almost had an accident in their pants. Momo stated and smiled slightly. The police informed her that the man she knocked out had shit himself. She knew it was not from her hitting the moron with the bar. He was so scared of Almond that he shit himself. Principal Nezu leaned forward and picked up his teacup. Thank you Miss Yeirazu. You may return to class. The small rodent type principal said and with a small bow, Momo left. Outside the office she leaned against the wall. She had not told the heroes inside or the detective that she found Almond to be stimulating. 
She felt immediately attracted to him, no matter what he looked like under that mask. With a slight exhale she returned to class. Inside the office, Nezu turned to All Might. Your thoughts on this? Nezu asked and All Might smiled widely. I think whoever this Alman is, I believe he is quirkless. All Might stated and Midnight shook her head as did Tsukachi. Not possible. From the other sightings he went up against a couple of really dangerous quirk users. One could turn his hands into blades. Been known to be quite good at hand-to-hand -hand combat. Tsukachi informed them as he thought about Rendiali Fask, otherwise referred as Razor Hands. Fask had been beaten badly and was in the hospital with two broken arms and a dislocated shoulder. Consider this, Alman is highly skilled in hand-to-hand -hand fighting and so far none of the witnesses or the criminals ever reported him using any type of quirk. Don't ask me why I believe this, maybe I am wrong. It is just a feeling that he does not have a quirk. Maybe I am wrong All Might said. Then thought of an idea on how to prove it. I think I know how to bring this Alman into a trap. He said as he glanced towards Midnight. Then told them his idea. Both Tashinori and Midnight nodded. That could work. I had not thought about that. But Midnight is well known she might be recognized. Tsukachi stated and Midnight smiled. I will wear a wig. I do have a blonde one that I once used when I went undercover as. Midnight blushed and coughed lightly. Let us just say it was to stop this maniac that was targeting business girls. She then smirked, thinking about the beating she did on the small perverse man that always attacked those women from behind. Because he was a coward and could not attack them from the front. To test my theory I will ask Shoto Aizawa to be present as well. Now all we need is a couple of men to play the criminals. All Might said and Tsukachi volunteered and suggested that Aizawa could be the other thug. Then tonight we spring the trap. With agreement by all, he went to his own office. In Class 1A, Momo was having trouble concentrating. Her thoughts were on Alman and how much she wanted to see him again. Shaking her head she grimaced. What the fuck is wrong with me? I never been obsessed with a boy or man before. She thought to herself as she tried to focus on the lessons that Aizawa was writing on the blackboard. She knew that boys and even men stared at her. Though she never thought about even acknowledging their attention to her. It actually bothered her to think about their lustful gazes, ever since she blossomed as her mother put it. Last year, at least once a week or sometimes twice, some boy or an older man would proposition her, wanting her to go with them. She had even been asked to go to bed with a couple of them. To her they were worse than my narrow minda, he was a pervert, but he was a harmless pervert. Those two men last night were not harmless. Before Alman arrived one of them in great detail told her what he wanted from her and it was her naked on her knees. She shuddered at what would have happened if he did not arrive when he did. She doubted that she had enough limpets to make too many more defensive or offensive weapons. Eventually they would have worn her down and then she could have been raped. Her thoughts were disturbed when the lunch bell rang. With a grumble she stood and followed her friends to lunch, hoping that soon she would not keep fantasizing and thinking about Alman. Trying to convince herself that Alman was probably a much older man and she was not into someone that was most likely twice her age. But her thoughts or hormones betrayed her, for she knew that he was not. She had not told the detective or teachers that she suspected that Alman was more likely owl teenager. With a smile she sat and ate in silence, pondering why she did not tell them, but knowing the answer. Into the night, the trap. With a slight groan, Izuku awoke and slapped the snooze button on his alarm clock, wanting and needing another nine minutes of sleep. Attending school, training and being Alman was starting to really get to him. After nine minutes, he grumbled and rose out of bed, turned his alarm clock off and stepped over to the weight set that he had found on the beach when he cleaned it placing another 175 pounds on the bar. He slipped onto the bench that was held up by cement blocks and began to lift 10 sets of 350 pounds, resting briefly and then doing another set of 10. When that was done he felt somewhat more awake. He still had an hour before he had to actually get ready for school, removing the weight and putting it on the floor. He somewhat wished he did not have to remove the weight, but he did not want his mother to know how much he actually lifted each day. Heading for the roof, he found his other morning training devices. A 2x8 board with foot-long 2x4 boards attached in different angles. In seconds he was either hitting the 2x4 boards with his forearms and feet or he was hitting the 2x8 with his fist. After a 10 minutes he punched hard the 2x8 and his fist broke through the board. Shit, that had been an accident, though he smirked. Removing his fist from the board he exhaled. Seven other fist-sized holes were all over the board. Soon he would have to replace the 2x8 along with most of the 2x4s. The next 30 minutes he worked on the parallel bars. When it was almost an hour, he walked back downstairs. Izuku was not even sweating as he entered the apartment and headed for the shower. Tonight would be another short night on patrol. For some reason the criminals and thugs only came seriously out on the weekend, Friday night and Saturday night. So the rest of the week, Izuku only had to patrol until about 2 to 3 am that gave him a couple more hours of sleep. Heading to school he was not really tired or even stiff from his workouts. That evening, he pulled his uniform out of the mattress and put it on. 
feeling the change of timid and weak Izuku to that of the night hunter Almond. Climbing out the window, he slid down the drainage pipe and onto the next roof over. Then keeping to the shadows, he started to hunt. After two hours he grimaced, as he leaned against the railing of a twenty-story building. Crime was going down. Each night it was getting easier and easier. At first he did not want to believe he was actually making a difference not with so many heroes on patrol. But he had actually seen it. Thugs and criminals were leaving the streets at night, in fear that they would come across him or more correctly Alman. Then to his somewhat relief he heard a scream. Running, across the roof, he headed towards the sound and when he neared it he looked down. A blonde woman was cornered by two thugs. As he studied the scenario he gave a chuckle. The woman moved with careful controlled steps and one of the men did the same. Gazing about, he moved his right hand up and began to dial the night vision option of his mask so he could see into the shadows, spotting a third bigger man in one of the other alleys. The trap, he muttered with another soft chuckle. Well if they want to trap Alman, then they are about to get lucky. Slipping down the side of the roof along the wall, he made his way into another part of the alley, keeping to the shadows himself. Moving towards what he knew was a trap, he pulled out his bolo. With a few rotations around his head he let the weighted rope soar and it wrapped around one of the men, tying him completely, as the one fell over. The other stared at him and Izuku wondered what he was doing. There was no real fear in the man's face and the woman had stopped screaming. Striding forward pulling his cape closed, Alman moved towards the thud. I suggest you leave or spring your trap, Izuku said menacingly and both the woman and the dark-haired man that stared at him gasped. It is not working. My quirk is not working on him, the racerhead said to Midnight. If you know who the signal and I guess we have to do this the hard way. Removing the trench coat that he wore he pulled out his binding tape. Midnight threw off her wig and pulled off her own coat. At that moment Izuku knew who both of them were and he started to back away. He did not want to fight heroes, that is not what he did. Well where do you think you are going? Midnight said in her seductive voice, licking her lips as she pulled out her whip. She snapped it towards him, thinking to ensnare his arms or even his neck. But he caught it with his right hand and Midnight gasped in shock. Careful he is fast. She commented and with a flick of his wrist he cut her whip. Deciding it was time to end this, she nodded to erase her head and he stepped back. She pulled at her sleeve and mists of white gas began to steam out of her forearm. Shit she is using her quirk. Izuku muttered then gave a small grin, pulling a filter mask out of his pouch and putting it on his face. Then he removed one of the darts on his left wrist and with a perfect flick of his right hand sent the dart tipped with a special Anastasia gel that was laced on the tips. The dart impacted with Midnight's left arm and she chuckled, pulling the metal dart out of her arm. Careful eraser, it seems he has some, some. Oh I feel weird, Midnight said as she looked at the small pen-sized dart. Her eyes then rolled up into her head and she collapsed. The racer head caught her before she hit the ground. He then glared at Almond. Do not worry, she will awaken within a few minutes or so. Alman said as he moved further back into the alley, not looking but knowing that the end was dark enough with shadows for him to make his escape. He sprung the trap only because he believed it was a couple thugs wanting to confront him, but to find out it was a couple of heroes, made him slightly off his game. When he collided with something behind him, his immediate reaction was to duck under what he knew from his training was someone else about to try to subdue him and he was right. He heard and saw two arms swing closed around where he had just been. Moving away from the man, Izuku kicked upwards with his right leg and felt the connection of his foot against the man's jaw, then almost yelped when he felt the impact. It was like kicking concrete. Crap I think I know who this is and if I am right I am in trouble. He muttered to himself as he dodged the big man's right punch, then grabbed the huge wrist and spun around and double kicking the man across the head, this time with the reinforced toes of his boots. At the same time, he pulled and threw a flash bomb into the man's face. It exploded with a white flash of light and for an instant Izuku saw the face. Crap it was All Might. He muttered as All Might grunted with disorientation. A-L-M-I-G-H-T. A racer head said loudly, stepping forward. The large hero put one hand over his eyes and the other he began to clumsily wave back and forth trying to grab at Alman. Before a racer head could get closer, Alman dashed around All Might and moved down the alley. The racer head ran past the blinded All Might and then stopped. Alman was gone, returning to the tied-up detective Sukachi. As All Might approached still seeing spots, well they could have gone better, Sukachi said as he rose and the two helped Midnight stand. She wobbled slightly and had a lopsided smile on her face. Her eyes were glossy and she gazed at Sukachi then over at Aizawa. I feel really good, Midnight said in a wistful voice. Any chance either or both of you would be interested in coming back to my place? She asked as her head slumped down and back up. The drug that Alman had hit her with was really affecting her libido. All Might rubbed his eyes and then smirked. You are right Sukachi. That could have gone better. All Might stated as he gazed upwards knowing that Alman was long gone. Aizawa was more negative about the brief encounter. It had felt like an hour but in truth it had only been about five minutes. Tell the truth on this. We blundered and basically got our asses kicked. Aizawa said as he held up Midnight by her own arm. 
We were unprepared for him and he kicked our asses with hardly any fuss. That statement really annoyed Aizawa, but not all might as he smiled broadly. True, but we also learned a few things. One he did not really try to hurt us. Two he only fought defensively and three and this is the most important. Did any of you see him use any type of quirk? All Might asked and both of the others shook their heads. I did not, so I was right. He does not possess a quirk. Not unless it was so subtle that none of us detected it. With a small voice Midnight smiled up at All Might. Oh I noticed something. He is not a man. More likely a teenager or someone young. Vital and very cute. Midnight said in a husky voice as she smiled, her eyes fluttering. You two did not answer me. I really would like it if one or both of you get in between my legs later. She said coyly and the all three of the men shook their heads. Better get her to recovery girl. At least until that drug wears off. Aizawa said and the three walked out of the alley. Several rooftops away. Izuku walked back and forth in aggravation. Shit, shit, shit. He said loudly and in anger. Heroes, fucking heroes. Shit. He ranted and with a need to hit something he hit a nearby cement wall with all his might. His hand smashed deep within a cinder block and he pulled it free. Then his brain caught up to his thoughts. He had just faced All Might and held his own. Previously facing down Midnight and Eraserhead to also. Two of the best teachers at the UA school. With a small smile he chuckled. Deciding to call it a night and go home. Not wanting to push his luck again if there were other traps set up to catch him. Bounding off the roof, he ran across others and was soon at his own, slipping into his bedroom and storing his uniform. The UA main building. With her hand on her head, Midnight groaned. Whatever he hit me with is just like being hungover in the morning. She stated rubbing her temples and wincing at the grogginess and pain. Her head was killing her. Recovery girl analyzed the compound on the dart. It is a mixture of reserpine and scopolamine. Thus it is a mild sedative and hallucinogenic. Recovery girl said as she held up the metal small pen-sized dart. Brilliant and creative, with very few side effects. She glanced over at midnight and the woman shook her head. Well it does have some side effects. From what you've all told me is that I lost all of my inhibitions and now I have a hangover that could kill a buffalo. Midnight stated, then smiled slightly. In truth she really did not have any inhibitions to lose. She would fuck anyone that caught her fancy and that did include Detective Tsukachi, All Might and even Iwaza. Basically she was a knife-a-maniac and did not really care if anyone knew that. So what do we do now? I doubt that he would be stupid enough to fall for another trap like that. She stated as she sipped her coffee and swallowed two aspirin, hoping either would make the hangover go away. That is the question of the day. We do know now that Almond is more like Altin and he is considerably skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat. He also uses darts, bolos and flash bombs. Tsukachi said as he picked up the bolo that sat on the table. It was not heavy, the weights were only about half a pound and were hard rubber. The rope attached to the two weights was a type of nylon that partially stretched. Then he picked up the fragments of the round flash bomb that Almond threw into All Might's face. The lab says it is a nitrogen and magnesium mixture that radiates no heat. Just a blinding flash, he said and as he dropped the fragments onto the paper, he glanced over at All Might who was staring out the window. Your thoughts All Might? He asked the hero and All Might turned away from the window. I think the trap still can work, but this time a much younger bait, perhaps someone that he already saved once and a couple more of us to confront him. All Might stated as he rubbed his chin with his right hand. Aizawa shook his head and frowned. No, you cannot ask a student to put herself in harm's way. Principal Nezu would throw a fit, Aizawa said firmly and the two other heroes shrugged. Of course if she just sort of wanders about and we happen to be there then I do not really see a problem with that. He waved his hands in the air and the others chuckled at the suggestion. The Himalayas, Shangri-La. Moving through the emerald gates of Shangri-La, Natsumaki bowed to a half-dozen monks that bowed back. Did you find a candidate master? One of the other monks asked and she nodded, seeing hundreds of the other monks all about the monastery of Shangri-La. Yes, I found an excellent disciple to become what we wanted, a hero that does not rely upon a quirk to fight against evil. In truth he has no quirk, Natsumaki said to her fellow monks and they gave slight smiles. Eventually though I believe that one of our order must return to teach him more of the way. She commented and then went towards her small room. She wanted to remove the western clothing and put on her robes, the robes of the Grand Master, Knight of the Trap. Casually walking down the street, Momo Yogarazu tried to remain calm. When Mr. Aizawa asked her to basically be the bait to trap Almon, she was hesitant and reluctant. She did not want them to hurt him. To her relief they informed her that they just wanted to talk to him, so she agreed to be the bait. But she had insisted that she go home and change her clothes from her school uniform into something else. Now wearing a nice blue skirt and light yellow blouse, she walked down the street. Her hair was done up and she had redone her makeup. In one of her ears was an earwick and she could talk to Midnight if she needed to. Momo you are not out here to pick him up. Just draw him in. Midnight informed her as the teacher frowned from a nearby alley, keeping a close watch on the 16-year-old student. Midnight chuckled as she looked at Momo. 
The young girl had insisted that she dress the way she was in midnight suspected that Momo was hoping to attract the young Alman not because she was in danger, but to talk to him. Teenagers, Midnight muttered with a grin. So what if he does not show? Are you planning on someone trying something and hoping that he swoops down again to help me? Momo whispered and before an answer could be given, a dark shape dropped in front of her. Startled slightly she stepped back and then noticed who it was. She smiled. Good evening, Alman said to Momo and glanced about. I suspect that you are the bait tonight to trap me, correct? He stated and Momo stopped smiling. She nodded and felt ashamed. They just want to talk. Well that is what they told me. If not you could always use me as a hostage. Momo suggested and then smiled warmly at him. Her heart fluttering widely in her chest as she looked at him. Finally noticing that he was a few inches shorter than she was. That is right Elman. All we want to do is talk. All Might said as he stepped out of a nearby alley and into the lights from the streetlights. I suppose the other night we should not have tried to capture. But talk to you. The hero admitted and as he moved next to Momo, she stepped over by him. He suspected that the young Momo was ready to become a hostage to ensure that Alman could get away if All Might had lied and it was a trap to confront him again physically. So talk, what do you want? Alman demanded and could almost tell that he was now surrounded by at least a dozen other heroes, subtly looking upward and noticing a few heroes hiding on the roofs. First you cannot operate as a hero without a license and to do so is illegal. All Might told him in noticing that Alman was not much taller than Momo. And if you do want to continue you will need to attend one of the hero schools. He stated and Izuku exhaled sharply. I was denied entry because I am quirkless. Alman said with menace and All Might smiled. He had been right. Alman did not have a quirk. That made him feel somewhat pleased. He liked being right. Well I think we can arrange for you to attend the UA. All Might said as he looked over to see Momo smile with delight. But Alman shook his head. I am quirkless. So why would they want me to attend? Alman said and then exhaled sharply again. Can I think about it? He asked and All Might nodded. Then before anyone could stop him, he pulled out a small found globe and threw it at his feet. A billowing smoke appeared and as All Might moved into the thick of the smoke, Alman was gone. Glancing about up and down the street as the smoke cleared, there was no sign of Alman. Other heroes stepped from their concealment and began to search. With a smile, All Might chuckled. Not bad kid. Not bad at all. All Might muttered as he spun on his heel and escorted Momo back to midnight, so the young student could return home. Decisions, start of school. At home, Izuku sat in front of his computer and researched the UA again. He had dreamed of attending the prestigious school for years and to be asked even though he was quirkless was exciting to him. Leaning back in his chair, he nodded. I guess I will. What is the worst that could happen? Izuku said to himself as he turned in the chair and began to mix the liquid nitrogen and magnesium together with a small amount of dried oak leaves to make another smoke bomb to replace the one he used that night. Early in the morning, Izuku put on his uniform and slipped out the window once again. It was just before 4 a.m. and he had to make his way to the UA school and wait for All Might, a racer head or even midnight to arrive. He had decided to go to the school and he wanted to make sure that one it was not another trap and two that he could make certain demands. One of them was that he be able to retain his identity. In one of his pouches was a hooded mask, black gloves and under his uniform was a black shirt and pants. Until he was ready, no one would know he Izuku Midoriya was Alman. Arriving at the UA school just before 5 a.m., Izuku frowned. There was no way he could sneak onto the campus. It was too heavily monitored and guarded. Then with a smirk he noticed that the faculty parking was not as secure. Two guards were at the main gate and both were preoccupied talking to each other. Picking up a rock, he threw it down the street and the guards immediately focused on the noise. Slipping past them, he entered the parking garage and within minutes found a nice place to wait. In a corner near where the parking space indicated that midnight parked at one and a racer had at another space. Detaching three of the overhead lights he knelt in the corner and closed his eyes, waiting patiently for either to arrive, perfectly concealed within the darkness of the parking garage. Just after 6 a.m., midnight arrived on a motorcycle and she stopped at her parking spot, glancing upwards at the lights that were out. I detached them from working, Izuku said as he stood and midnight jumped back slightly. Do not do that, midnight stated with frustration. Jeez you are sneaky, she said then smiled slightly, noting that he was really good at blending into the darkness and even in the dim light of the garage he seemed menacing. He fully stepped out of the shadows and she looked down at him. Sorry, I like the shadows in the dark, Almond said and she shook her head at him, then scowled, putting her hands on her hips. I can tell. Oh by the way what was in that dart you hit me with? I had such a bad hangover in the morning that it took hours before I did not feel like shit. Midnight asked and she saw him smile evilly. Trade secret. Could not let you gas me. Almond said and Midnight chuckled. To answer your unasked question, I am here to take All Might's offer to enroll in the UA, but I have certain conditions that I need written clarification on. He then waited for her to take him to someone who could meet the conditions or ask what they were. With a slight exhale, she turned. Okay follow me. 
Midnight said and started walking towards the exit. Then a thought came to her. How did you get in here by the way? She heard him chuckle lightly and she shivered. The sound of his small laughter was disturbing. Like you said I am sneaky. Alman replied and she led him out of the garage and towards the main building. Out in the light of the day, his uniform did not look so menacing as it did in the dim light or the shadows, but it still held a certain darkness to it and for midnight he still seemed to menacing. Entering the principal's office, Midnight noticed that Alman slipped into a nearby corner and waited. Soon after Nezu came out of his office and made a small squeak as he looked over at the dark figure in the corner of the room. Principal Nezu this is Alman. Well to be completely correct we all suspect that he is more likely an owl teenager. Midnight said as the mouse type administrator stared at the young man in the corner and relaxed. For Nezu his rodent-like nature was naturally afraid of predators and for him this Alman looked and acted just like a hunter of prey. Swallowing visibly he forced himself to smile. Welcome Alman, I am Principal Nezu. What can I do for you? Nezu asked and then led the dark-figured young man into his office, having to fight the compulsion to hide from the menacing eyes of the Alman. After 20 minutes Nezu nodded with agreement. All of your demands can easily be met, and I do believe it would be best that no one, not even any of the teachers know who you are really. Alman smiled and Nezu winced. I have some dark clothes and a hood that I can wear that will hide my appearance quite well. Alman said and then Nezu thought a moment. That is fine, but I do not think that you should be referred to as Alman as an identifier. Perhaps something less, fearful, Nezu suggested and the young man leaned against the desk and smiled again. Okay, then how about Natsumaki or to shorten it Sumaki? Izuku said and then gave a soft chuckle and Nezu did not like that sound either. Leaving the office, Izuku headed for class 1 a locker rooms. He held a key to one of the lockers and that would be where he stored his uniform. Taking off the Alman uniform he put on the hood and gloves, pocketing one of the smoke bombs and one flash bombs in his pockets. Trust had to be earned and for him to function he could not fully trust the faculty or even the students until he was sure he could, hiding in plain sight. Using the small map that Nezu had provided, Isuku found his homeroom and entered. All eyes within fell upon him and he felt somewhat reluctant to enter, especially when he saw Kakan sitting in the middle of the room. Ah I was told you would be here today. Class this is Sumaki otherwise known as Alman. Aizawa announced and everyone in the room gasped. All but Momo who smiled warmly at him. Please take a seat. The homeroom teacher said and Momo waved her hand at Izuku. Over here there is an empty seat over here. Momo said indicating the seat next to her. She had bribed Denki Kaminari with $100 to surrender his seat and move to one next to Katsuki Bakugo. She knew that Alman was coming today and she wanted him to sit next to her. Gracefully, Izuku made his way to the seat and sat, then noticed that all eyes were still on him, especially all the girls within the room. Thankfully for him the hood and mask he wore hid his embarrassment as he looked around the room. I do not think we have been introduced. I am Momoye Irazu. She whispered to him as she leaned over to conveniently pick up her dropped pencil. Sumaki, Izuku said and Momo wiggled her nose and smirked. That is not your real name is it? Momo asked and Izuku shook his hooded head. Thought so. Then she returned to sitting normally, still smiling slightly and paid attention once more to Awaza, who had to regain everyone's attention. The class was not as boring as Izuku thought it would be, especially when All Might entered and informed them that they would be conducting combat training today. Also it would be in uniform. Standing Izuku went to the locker room to put his on. Stepping outside and joining the others, he did not feel so out of place or exposed now. Glancing over he saw Momo and his eyes bulged widely. This gives me better access to my quirk, she explained as he tried not to stare at her. I know I am a bit exposed, but my quirk is creation and if I know the chemical formula of something I can create it, she stated and he returned his focus to All Might. Now I will pairing you into two-person teams. One will be the villain and one will be the heroes. The villains will defend a mock bomb and the heroes will attempt to touch it indicating that they defused it. All Might said and then described the rules and about the capture tape. Now if you all would like, you may choice your partner. That All Might discovered was a mistake, for every young girl raised their hands and wanted Sumaki alias Alm. Never mind, I will pick the teams. Basically just pointing and saying who was with who. Being paired with Orchako Yuraraka, Izuku walked into the building. Somewhere inside was Kaken and Tenya Ada, portraying the villains. To him it was still to light out and inside the lights were also on. Glancing over he spotted the circuit breaker box and with a flick of his wrist sent one of his normal spikes into it. With sparks from the breaker box the lights went off and the emergency lights came on. That is better, Izuku said and Orchako looked at him with curiosity. Head for the bomb, I will take care of Katsuki Bakugo and Tenya Ada. He told her and as she glanced down the corridor then back towards him only he was no longer there. She gasped, Alman was gone. Sliding down the corridors, Izuku stayed within the shadows and he spotted Kaken waiting nervously, not liking that he could not see completely down any of the corridors. Keep your ass puckered Ida. This asshole likes hiding and sneaking around. 
Katsuki said to Tenya, spinning towards a noise. He raised his hand ready to fire an explosive charge. Sweat poured down his back and he breathed heavily. Behind you, a rasping voice whispered and Katsuki spun around and swung his hand towards Izuku, ducking under the explosive blast. Izuku kicked Kaken's feet from under him and then grabbed his arm swinging him around to slam him into a nearby wall. Too slow, Izuku said, then slipped back into the shadows, folding his cape around him. Katsuki sent a blast to where Almond was just was and knew he missed. Sneaky motherfucker, Katsuki said angrily as he rotated around holding his right hand upwards, wanting a target any target. Sensing and guessing that he was behind him again, he swung around and blasted the wall, then felt a hand on his shoulders and being pulled back hard onto the floor. With a grunt, he glared upwards from the floor and growled, Ida get your fucking ass down here. He ordered and Tenya stated he would not leave the bomb. Who fucking cares about the bomb? This asshole is playing with me and I need you to get down here and help me get him. Katsuki ranted as he stood and began to look one way then another, deciding to return to Ada and then make him come to them, not knowing that Izuku was already gone. He had joined Orochako outside the room that held the bomb, touching her shoulder as she peered into the room. Orochako almost yelped when she felt his hand. Do not do that. You almost scared the piss out of me. She whispered and then pointed into the room. Ada was standing firmly in the center of the room, ready to defend the bomb. So what is the plan? She asked him and he smiled. She saw his expression and shivered, not liking it at all. Close your eyes, when I say go. Get to the bomb. Izuku ordered and she did as she was told, closing her eyes tightly shut. Izuku rolled into the room and as Ida prepared to attack him, Izuku pulled out one of his flash bombs. Rotating around a column, he tossed the bomb at Ida and then lunged towards him. The flash exploded momentarily blinding Ida. Not ready as someone slammed into him and then pinning him against the wall. Go, Izuku said and Orochako ran into the room and touched the bomb. Just as Katsuki stepped into the room, the heroes win. All Might's voice said over the speakers and Katsuki growled angrily. Tenya took off his helmet to rub the sparkles out of his eyes. Then he smiled at Almond. Outside the other students and All Might waited. Well done Sumaki. I did see some issues. You spent too much time messing with Katsuki Bakugo. Next time you should try to disarm the bomb first then take on the villains. Then he turned to Tenya and Katsuki telling them about their own failures and successes. Finishing with Orochako. Can I ask a favor sir? Orochako asked as she looked over at Sumaki. Please do not pair me with him again. He is really creepy. She stated and went to talk to her three new friends. Momo, Taro and Mina. Glancing over towards Sumaki and noticed that he was standing with his wing type cape pulled around him. Marching over to Izuku. Katsuki stood in front of him and scowled. Listen, I do not know how you did that in there. He then smiled. But that was fucking awesome. You are one sneaky bastard and how you blend into the shadows is outstanding. He said as he was about to clasp Izuku's shoulder then stopped himself. Not liking how Almond was looking at him with those red tinted glowing eyes of his. Is that your quirk? Melting into shadows. Mina Ashido asked as she stepped closer and looked at Sumaki. Then stepped back when Sumaki or Almond smiled. No. Izuku replied and then glanced about to make sure every one of his class could hear him. I do not have a quirk. That statement had the desired effect on all of his fellow classmates. They stared at him with shock. Back to class, end of the day. Being somewhat relieved to be out of her custom, Momo waited for Sumaki or whatever his real name was. She wanted to talk to him and as he entered he saw her. Isn't class over? Izuku asked and Momo nodded. Yes, I was waiting to talk to you. Momo said as she gestured for him to sit. He was not wearing that menacing custom now and she felt somewhat more comfortable that he was wearing just dark clothes and a hooded mask. That night, you really saved me from being in some serious trouble. You were actually amazing and I was really impressed. She said as he shrugged and smiled. This time she liked the smile. It did not seem devilish or evil in a way. It was really nice. I was glad to help. Though I did not do much. Izuku said and without the uniform to make his voice sound harsh and cold, he saw her smile at him. Not true, you scared the piss out of them. That one I knocked out actually pissed himself and I do not think it was because of me hitting him. Momo said laughing slightly and then hearing him do the same. He stood and gestured to the door. If that is all, I better get home. It is a little harder for me since I have to sneak back as Almond. Izuku said and Momo frowned, then smiled and reached out to take his gloved hand. You can trust us, well at least me. I understand you want to keep your identity secret, but eventually you will have to tell someone and I would like to be your friend. Momo said and Izuku nodded, then realizing she could not see him nod. Perhaps soon, I have to get to know you and the others before I can trust you. Izuku said as he felt her give his hand a gentle squeeze. His eyes widened. Whoa, she likes me. He thought and then shook it off. No that cannot be it. She released his gloved hand and stood. See you tomorrow, Momo Yoyorazu. He said hastily about to leave and stopped when she chuckled. See you tomorrow. Hey I have an idea. If I can ever guess your first name, you tell me the truth and then trust me. 
If I cannot guess then, let's see. What do you think would be a good side wager on this? Momo asked and then smiled. I know, I take you out to dinner. With that she rushed out of the room before he could agree or disagree. We can hammer out the details tomorrow, see you later. Leaving him in somewhat shock that she had just basically asked him out on a date. Shaking his head, he headed for the locker room to change once again into Alma. Stepping out of the locker room, Power Loader met him at the door. I think I might have some items that could really help you. The techno hero said as he opened a case and held up two gauntlets. Both were open on the bottom of the straps and as Power Loader put them on his wrists he showed that Izuku could still use his spikes. On the back of each gauntlet was three barbed points. Okay this was designed and built by one of my students, Meihatsu. Now when you close your hand into a fist, then place your other hand on top of the gauntlet. You will feel three buttons. When you press one of them, a barbed spike will shoot out of gauntlet and it can pierce solid steel. There is a Corvitech titanium weaved line that is good for about 100 feet, Power Loader said instructing Izuku with the devices. If you tap the button that you just pressed again, it will retract and pull you upwards with it, or you can release it and swing from it. Below that switch is a slide. Run it forward and it will cut the line and you are free. But I suggest you try to retrieve at least the line. He stated then handed him a container. Inside was 12 replacement barbed spikes and 12 tubes that Izuku could see had the lines in them. With a smile Izuku held his gauntlet covered arms up. Thank you, Izuku said and Power Loader smiled as well. Give us a week and we can get you some other cool toys to use. The techno hero said and then picked up his case and headed back down the hall, leaving Izuku to ponder and think about how he would have to train in the use of his new gadgets. Running across the roofs he found a perfect place to try out the gauntlets. Aiming at the top of one of the buildings he normally went around, a 30-story one that sat in the middle of the outskirts of the business district, he aimed his right arm upwards and pushed the button. With a gush of escaping air, the barbed spike shot out and with an almost silent thud, the spike speared into the hard cement of a building. Touching the switch he felt the retracting of the line as it pulled him upwards and in seconds he was on the roof, detaching the line from the spike. That was awesome. Izuku gasped out as he smiled, deciding to really practice that a lot more. In time it would really help him move around the roofs of the city more effectively. Day 2 of class, the game and trust. The next morning Izuku showed up at the UA and changed into the dark clothing. Then went to class. Momo smiled at him as he sat. Okay, I will guess and you tell me if I am right. I think 30 guesses is all I get. And if I can't then I take you to dinner. Deal? She said and Izuku shrugged. Why not? Izuku said and she nodded and then became serious. Starting to guess and after 10 names she frowned visibly. Am I even close? Momo asked in exasperation and Izuku shook his head negatively. I should have said 100. Let me think about it and we can restart at lunch. She stated and then returned her full attention to the front of the class as Aizawa entered. By lunch Mina Ashido and Toru Hagakure had heard about the guessing game and wanted in with the same wager. Izuku decided to let them have their fun and wondered what he would do if one of them guessed his first name. Then to his horror, others from the class wanted in on the contest or game. Siyu Asui, Kyoko Jiro and reluctantly Orchako Yuraka all seemed to want to either win or take him to dinner. I think I am in serious trouble, Izuku said to Mr. Aizawa after class was sent to lunch. How so? The quirk blocker asked as he slumped against the wall, ready to take a nap. Izuku turned and exhaled sharply. Somehow I got involved with some type of game with Momo, where if she can guess my name, my real first name, I will trust her. If she can't then she has to take me to dinner. Then Izuku frowned. Now all of the girls of the class want to play the game. I cannot take them all out to dinner. Hell I have not even been on a date before. Aizawa started to laugh as he sat up. Sounds like Mr. Sumaki that you are going to have to trust one of them or you are going to be a very busy young man for the next couple of weeks. Aizawa informed him, silently hoping that he did. He also wanted to know the true identity of the mysterious Alman. That turned out to be a mid-teenage young man. Grumbling Izuku left to go to lunch and to his continued dismay. All six of the girls of the class were waiting for him at a table. Each was pointing to an empty seat at the round table within the cafeteria. We have changed the rules slightly. Mina stated as Izuku sat down, feeling trapped. Okay if one of us guesses your real first name. Each of us has written down our guesses and will hand them to you to look at and if we guess right. Then that one gets to take you to dinner and you trust that one for now. Does that sound fair? The pink hair and skin girl said, smiling at him coyly and Izuku exhaled with relief. At least he would not feel like he would have to be taken to dinner by six different girls. Yes that does sound fair. Though I still wonder why you all would want to. I mean I am quirkless and trust me I am not that good looking. Izuku related. Though they could not tell because he either wore a hooded mask or his almon uniform. But all the girls shook their heads and gave him flattering looks that told him that they did not believe him. There is more to you than what you look like. Toru stated and he could not see her so he could almost relate. He did suspect that she had a very attractive personality that any boy his age would be enthused with. 
Okay who goes first? Oh we all have lists of names and you have to be honest. If one of us guesses then that girl wins. The invisible girl said and he rolled his eyes. Gah me. I still do not understand why any of you would bother. I am no great prize. Izuku again tried to dissuade them but knew it was hopeless. He had somehow interested all of the girls from his class. He was thankful that none of the other classes had learned of this game and wanted to participate. He liked being in the shadows and having a bunch of girls chasing him was not as incognito as he liked. I will go first, Mina announced and held up her paper, then handed it to him. To his relief she was close but had not guessed his real first name. He shook his head and handed the paper back to Mina. Oh poo, I am out, she said with frustration, wrinkling her nose and frowning. Then Kyoko brought up a good point. Wait what if he does lie? How can any of us tell that he will actually tell the truth? Kyoko asked as she looked around the table at the other girls of the class. Momo spoke up in his defense. I think he will be honest and if we cannot trust him, we cannot ask him to trust any of us. Can we? Momo stated and the others agreed. Even Mina who lost so far. Toru volunteered next and when he handed it back, she crossed her chest with her empty sleeves and grumbled. Orchako was next and no again. Then Kyoko and again no. Suyu slowly handed over her guesses and Izuku smiled at her. Then skimmed the names and shook his head. She actually looked somewhat relieved as she retook her guesses. Finally Momo handed him hers and he looked down the list. His eyes locked onto the next to the last name. There it was Izuku. Well shoot. Izuku said as he handed Momo back her paper. She frowned thinking that she had not guessed right. He shook his head and then shrugged. One of those on there is my real first name. But I am not saying which one it is. I will keep my promise and tell Momo later. He stated and Mina grabbed the paper and began to look down the list. The others peered over her shoulders. All but Momo who smiled over at him. So do you want to know now or later? He asked Momo who stood and took his hand and led him out of the cafeteria. She had found an open closet and after making sure no one saw them, she had him go inside and she joined him and closed the door. You can trust me. I will not tell anyone or tell anyone what you actually look like. Momo stated as he exhaled and slowly raised his hands upwards towards his hooded mask. Then paused. Once you see what I look like and you do not want to know my name or do not want to take me to dinner, I will understand. Izuku said to her and she bit her bottom lip, trying not to feel nervous or anxious about seeing who Almin is or learning his real name. He removed his hood and mask and she smiled. What you are extremely cute. You had us all believe that you were a circus freak like the dog boy or something worse. Momo said as she peered at Izuku and she reached up to touch his green hair. Now that is really unusual, green hair and green eyes. She added, so what is your first name? She asked and he exhaled and smiled. It was the second one from the bottom of your list. It is Izuku. Izuku told her and she giggled, then shook her head. Totally lucky me. I added those last two from a list of names I found on the internet that is hardly ever used today. Momo informed him and then handed him a piece of paper. This is my address and phone number. Let's say we go out on Friday night, which is tomorrow night. Come to my house at 5 p.m. and we can either go out or stay in. Your choice. She then took his hood and mask from his hand and put it back on him. I promise I will not tell anyone. Not until you tell me I can. She opened the door and peered out. No one was in sight. Taking his hand, she gave it a gentle squeeze and then led him out of the closet and the two headed back to class. She released his hand outside their classroom and they entered separately. As soon as Momo sat down, Mina and Taro swarmed her. Or Chaco, Kyoko and Tsuyu just spun their chairs to listen. Mina spoke softly but first. So is he cute? Mina asked Momo excitingly. Momo gave a small grin and nodded. That is so unfair. Toru stated crossing her arms and her friends may not be able to see her, but they could easily guess. Stop pouting Toru. Momo won fair and square and she gets to take him out. Kayoko said and Toru grumbled loudly. I am not pouting. It is just not fair. He likes to stay in the shadows and disappear. I am invisible, so we have a lot in common. Toru explained in a whiny voice as she sat heavily and grumbled again. All the others including Momo laughed. Well do not upset. It is just one date and maybe Momo won't like him and then we all might get a chance with Mr. Mysterious. Mina stated and Toru clapped her hands and giggled. Okay so who gets him next if Momo does not like him? Toru asked and Orchako, Kyoko and Tsuyu shook their heads. They did not want to be in the running. Orchako was still afraid of him. Kyoko was not really interested in dating yet and Tsuyu was just too shy. Let's flip a coin. Heads you Toru and tails me. Mina answered pulling out a coin and showing Toru both sides. Momo just stared in shock. The two have already decided that if she does not like him, then they were going to flip a coin to determine who would try next to date him. She wondered if they would be upset to learn that she did already like him and hoped that he liked her too. Not watching the outcome, she glanced towards the hooded and masked Izuku and smiled at him, giving him a little wave. To her delight he waved back. At the end of the day, Izuku left the UA school with the dark clothing, leaving his Almond uniform in the secure locker.
It was so much easier to go to the train station, flipping the hood down and taking the mask off in the bathroom and then catching the train home. It also made it easier going to school. He did not have to leave at 4 a.m. in the morning and sneaking across half the city, though he did enjoy doing that. Nights and days, after arranging a time for Izuku to come to her house for a private dinner with her, Momo glanced over at him periodically during the day. He still wore his hooded sweatshirt with the hood up and the mask on, though she did know what he looked like. Today being Friday, all of the classes were normal high school courses, math, English, social studies and even history. All easy subjects for her. At 2.30 the day was over and she met Izuku Akaalman outside the locker room and when he stepped out carrying a large duffel bag, my uniform, Izuku explained as he hefted the bag onto his shoulder. Part of the agreement, I can go out on the weekend, though mostly it is so that I can be seen. I cannot really do anything unless it is dire. He stated, Momo looked around and leaned in closer. See you at 4 p.m. for our date, Momo said and he smiled and nodded. Then without another word he walked away. She watched him a moment and then made her way to where Jasper's, her family's butler slash driver waited for her. She had to hurry. She only had about an hour to get ready for their date and she knew she would need every minute of that time to make herself presentable. At Momo's and her parents' mansion, she walked down the stairs and stared into the mirror, gasping as she looked at herself. Oh no. The shirt does not match my jeans, she said in shock, about to run back upstairs and change once again. Her mother sat in the living room and overheard Momo. This had been the third time that Momo came down and then rushed back up the stairs. Either the clothes were not right or her hair was not. On the fourth time, Momo's mother stood and came out into the foray. Dear what is the matter? Asha Momo asked as she saw her daughter once again stared into the mirror, then glancing at the clock and finally the door, looking finally into the mirror once more. He will be here in 20 minutes and I just want to look my best. But that seems impossible, Momo replied, biting her bottom lip and considering changing her clothes again. This time back to the sweatpants and white v-neck t-shirt. She was in near panic as she checked her face in the mirror, praying that she did not have a pimple. You have been on dates before. Why are you so nervous? Asha Momo asked and Momo finished checking for pimples and turned towards her mother, frowning as she shook her head. Those were social engagements, not dates and I did not like any of them. Izuku is different, I really like him, Momo stated, pulling out strawberry-flavored lip gloss and applying another coat on her lips. Asha Momo chuckled as Momo looked down and gasped audibly. No, the shoes do not match the light blue jeans or my yellow t-shirt, Momo said in horror as she ran back up the stairs to get her multicolored sneakers, knowing that those would match anything. Momo passed her father and barely acknowledged him. Takanorma watched his daughter run past him and he gestured with his thumb towards her in question to his wife Asha Momo. She smiled. She has a date and she is a little nervous. Ashimomo informed him and he scowled, coming down the rest of the way and deciding to wait for whoever dared to see his daughter. Crossing his arms he leaned against the wall and continued to scowl. Now Takai be nice when he arrives. Momo really likes this boy. When Momo started to descend the stairs again, she noticed her father standing to one side waiting. Dan please. Momo pleaded and he father smirked slightly. It is my right to meet whoever it is that is coming to take you out on a date. Takai stated and then watched Momo glance over towards Ashi her mother hoping that she could intervene. The doorbell rang and Momo rushed to answer it, wondering if it was possible to change the plans for the date to something not in her home. Unfortunately her father beat her to the door. Who are you and what do you want? He demanded as he glared down at the young man that had just arrived. Izuku Midoriya. Momo asked me to come to dinner with her. Izuku replied staring normally up at the large man that now stood blocking almost the whole door. This startled Takanorma as he looked down at the young Izuku, noting that even though he outweighed the teenager, Izuku showed that he was not intimidated by Takai. Let him in Takai, Ashimomo ordered and the large man moved, gesturing for Izuku to enter if he dared. With no reluctance, Izuku entered and Momo mouthed her apologies, though she was also smiling. Her father was used to people being intimidated by his size and manner, but Izuku was not and she knew why. Seeing him in action on several YouTube videos, she guessed that he could thoroughly tie her father into a pretzel in the time it took to tie a shoe. So how do you know Momo? Asha Momo asked Izuku and he shrugged. From UA, I am in class with her. Izuku replied and this caught Takai with delight. Oh so you want to be a hero too? So what is your quirk? Takai asked with interest and Izuku just lightly exhaled and gave a small grin. I do not have a quirk. I am quirkless, Izuku said evenly and both Takai and Ashi first stared at Izuku and then over at Momo aghast in that statement. Quirkless? Then how the hell did you get into the hero course with Momo? Takai asked in shock. Then he nodded and smiled. Oh I think I know. It is a publicity stunt to placate the quirkless. The school has no intention of allowing you to become a licensed hero, he said with understanding. Izuku stared at Takai for a second and then smiled widely. That could be it. Izuku said softly as he continued to smile. 
The school could have me put into the hero course as a stunt, stating that it would show that anyone can apply and attend, but those that are quirkless would not be able to pass the hero certification. He thought. Momo in the meantime tried to intervene but failed as her mother and father blocked her from even getting next to him. So what are you going to do on this date tonight? Ashi asked, looking back at Momo and then at Izuku. Momo spoke up immediately. I had planned on us eating dinner on the veranda. Just the two of us without any chaperones. Momo said firmly and her mother nodded with approval. Her father was another matter. He scowled again. Can I have a word with you Momo? In private. Takai ordered and then pointed into one of the side rooms. Making sure Momo preceded him, he walked behind her into the room, closing the door. I understand that you are old enough to date a boy, but that boy is quirkless, so essentially he is not good enough for you. He stated as he gestured towards the closed door. Quirkless does not mean worthless, dad, Momo said as she frowned at her father. I like him. He is the best person I have ever met and you would think so too if you get to know him. She added and her father shook his head, then let her pass to go on what he hoped was just the one date. Momo came out and heard her mother asking Izuku a bunch of questions, mainly about how he would be able to be a hero without having some type of impressive quirk. He did not really reply, just kept saying that he did not know. Momo immediately took his hand and led him from the Inquisition, heading for the veranda. I am so sorry about that. She partially whispered so that only he could hear her. Outside after they sat she closed her eyes and exhaled. It is alright. It is nice to see that your parents want to make sure that you do not get involved with the wrong person, Izuku said and Momo suspected that he was talking about himself, believing that he was completely wrong for her, since he did not have a quirk or some other ridiculous reasons that she would eventually have to disprove. You see, my father has his mind set on me getting with one of his friend's sons. The problem is that his friend's son is a total dullard and is about as sharp as a bowling ball, Momo stated, not telling Izuku that last year on the one social arrangement that she went on with him. The little prick tried to grope her tits and her ass twice, not the type of person she would ever even think about getting involved with, though her mind was basically set on Izuku and she was stubborn enough to get what she wanted. Deciding to change the subject she leaned closer. I have a whole lot of questions about you know who. She saw him smirk and nod. Ask away and I will answer three of them, but only if I can. There is certain things I prefer to not let anyone know, Izuku said with a wave of his hand. Momo began to categorize the questions she wanted ask and the answers she wanted to know. Okay, why on Al? How does that uniform blend into the shadows so well and how did you learn to fight like you do? Momo listed three of the most important questions she had. He nodded again and leaned even closer. The night that I decided that I needed some type of uniform that would instill fear into criminals and ones like them. I saw a bat flying around. I was going to go with that, thinking what better than something that hunted and swooped around at night. But before I could really decide an owl flew down and grabbed the bat. So I reconsidered and thus Alman. Izuku answered her first question. Then after a few minutes, I can't tell you who, but someone made it for me. It is an experimental stealth material she created and it is able to blend into shadows and darkness. He told her and she really wanted to hear him answer the third question but he paused. Please I would like to know, how are you able to fight so effectively? From what I have seen on YouTube, you seem to be really great at it. Momo said as she smiled and he exhaled sharply. That is another question that I cannot fully answer. Let me just say that the person who taught me, also taught me other things that really helped me be Alma. Izuku replied, the statement was true in a way. Natsumaki has not only taught him how to fight, but also almost everything else associated with being Aoman. From making the special flash and smoke bombs to that of being able to basically disappear. He owed it all to Natsumaki. She had made him three times as strong, fast and agile. It was not easy. The one that taught me basically kicked my butt every day for almost two months. I trained for almost a year with her and I train almost every day so that I get better. He told her and she smiled. Any chance I could see where you train? Momo asked and he nodded, then glanced behind her as a middle-aged man came out the door carrying a tray. Izuku could see two plates with assorted food on them, as the man set one plate down in front of him and then one in front of Momo. Thank you Jaspers, she said smiling and Jaspers gave a slight nod, turned and departed, a few minutes later bringing out two glasses of chocolate milk. Sure why not, but it will have to be tomorrow. I am going on patrol right after I leave here, Izuku said then noticed Momo lopsided grin. Sounds like perhaps another date to me. Momo stated with enthusiasm. How about I come by your place around noon and then we can go to the movies. I know this theater that not too many people frequent, so we do not have to worry about anyone from school seeing you. She explained and he shrugged. Good then it is settled. Izuku stared at her for a moment and wondered how she had somehow arranged for them to go out on another date. He had planned on this being it, but now he was going on another. Two hours later after having a nice chat and meal, it was time for Izuku to go out on his patrol. Standing outside the front door, Momo was slightly reluctant for him to go. 
She really, really liked him and wanted him to stay for a little longer. You want to know something? Izuku asked and Momo nodded. I had planned on just being here for perhaps long enough to eat and then go. But I really enjoyed tonight. He admitted and smiled. Momo was somewhat surprised that he would admit that to her. Biting her bottom lip, she looked at him intently and before her parents came out to check on them or she lost the nerve, she jetted forward and pressed her lips against his. Izuku felt her petal soft lips on his, though the kiss was light and over in seconds. To both of them it was outstanding. As Momo darted into the house, not wanting him to notice that her face turning red with embarrassment, standing at the door for a few minutes, Izuku blinked a couple of times. Wow, he stammered out. He smiled and then finally turned and walked to where he had hid his uniform, feeling ecstatic. Saturday morning, Momo picked up her phone and skimmed the recent YouTube videos on Alm. She had done that since he saved her ass and her virtue from those two assholes that tried to ravage her. Wanting to see some more positive ones, she found two that had over a million hits. The first one was taken by someone that first showed a group of about 10 men that ranged from 20 to 25 years old. She could hear them making plans to have some so-called fun. From general mayhem to that of accosting someone and beating them up, the person that was taping then gasped and he moved the picture upwards. Above the so-called thugs was Alman, hanging what looked like from his clawed feet, upside down and glaring down with his red glowing eyes at them. When a passing car highlighted him for a second one of the thugs had glanced upwards. Then the man's eyes widened and he gasped loudly, grabbing one of his buddies and pointing upwards, his hand shaking. All the thugs then looked up and two immediately ran off. The others all stared at the demon hanging above them looking like in all appearances as a predator ready to swoop down on them from above. Momo then heard Alman's voice. Good evening, gentlemen. He said with his menacing voice and all the thugs ran. The man recording the scene played it downward towards the fleeing men then a second later back up and Alman was gone. The video then showed as the man made his own hasty retreat. Momo laughed and then saved the video. Moving on to the next one. This one was tragic. A fire had broken out in an apartment building. A very old woman about 70 was crying and pointing up at her apartment. Ten stories up. Flames were dancing out other apartments and the woman was trying to beg one of the firemen to rescue her cat. Then the whole crowd gasped as Alman seemed to fly in and crashed through the window on the tenth floor. Smoke could be seen billowing out of the now open window. Then just a minute later he was back, gently coming down and landing on his feet. It looked like he had his right wing wrapped around his side and as he opened his wing, he handed the old woman a white cat. She stared at him with shock and then hugged her cat. Before she could thank him, he spread his wings and flew upwards. Momo felt tears in her eyes as she saved that one as well. Then saw a follow-up video. The old woman was crying and she held her cat in the frame. I have never made a video on this thing before and I hope that it somehow reaches you Alm. The old woman said, tears flowing down her face. I want to thank you for saving Fluffy. She means the world to me and you saved her. You are a true hero. Then she smiled. You protect us and I believe that you are not a demon but an angel. But I suspect that those that are evil and harm others for evil reasons, you are a demon and will make them wish that they never were born. Thank you again Alman. Momo saved that one as well and smiled, not wanting to wait until noon to see him. Having Jaspers drive her to his apartment building, 20 minutes later, entering the apartment building she found Midoriya on the list and proceeded up the elevator. Feeling somewhat nervous she rang the bell and a short woman answered, Can I help you? The older woman asked kindly and Momo melted inside, knowing that this must be Izuku's mother. Yes I am Momo Yoyorazu, a friend of Izuku's. I wonder if I could see him. Momo said to Izuku's mother and the older woman smiled, opening the door wider and indicating for Momo to enter. Of course dear, he is asleep right now, but I am sure he will wake up if he knows you are here. And Ko said as she walked over to an adjoining room and knocked, second later entering. A few minutes later a sleepy Izuku came out, rubbing his eyes, wearing only pajama pants and no shirt. But Momo's eyes was locked onto Izuku's bare chest. Her eyes widened with delight as she stared at his impressive chest, abs and arms. Izuku you might want to put a robe on in front of your friend. And Ko suggested then smiled over at Momo. Sorry, he usually sleeps in on Saturday for some reason. She said, seeing Izuku grab a robe from his room and put it on. Still partially asleep. Sorry. Izuku apologized as he covered himself and Momo finally blinked. I though you were not coming until noon. He said to Momo and she shrugged. I just could not wait. If we go soon we can make the early screening. Momo suggested and Inko jabbed Izuku with her elbow. I must have failed as a mother somehow, because my son would by now would introduce me to this young woman. Inko said sternly to Izuku and Momo chuckled. Oh whoops, sorry, this is my mother, Inko Midoriya and this is. Izuku said as he indicated each, but his mother cut him off. I know son, Momo Yoyorazu. Inko said then to tease her son a little. My oh my, she is a pretty young woman. Are you his girlfriend Momo? Inko asked and Izuku groaned and put his hand over his eyes. No, well I am his friend and I am a girl. Momo clarified but really wanted to say. 
Not yet, but I will be soon. She giggled when Izuku grunted barely audibly. I am asleep and this is a nightmare. It has to be. Izuku said as he felt his face begin to feel warm. Inko and Momo laughed as he removed his hand and exhaled. Nope I am awake. With another audible groan, he turned back towards his room. I am going to take a shower and get dressed. He informed them as he departed, wondering if it was actually smart to leave Momo with his mother, knowing that it probably wasn't. Once he closed the door, Inko gestured towards two chairs. He will be a few minutes. Inko told Momo as they sat across from each other. So do you like my son? She asked Momo. Nodding Momo smiled and glanced towards the closed door. Very much. Momo admitted to Inko and the older woman smiled. Good. Inko said in delight. Momo instantly liked Izuku's mother and knew that his mother liked her. Ten minutes later, Izuku came out and regretted coming out of his room at all, considering going back into his room and locking the door, noticing both of their expressions and at first wanting to know what they had been talking about. Then he decided that he really did not want to know, gesturing towards the door. Shall we go, Momo? Izuku asked and Momo stood. Inko smiled warmly at her. Have fun on your date. Oh Momo come by anytime. I would love to tell you some stories about Izuku. Inko stated and Izuku gently took Momo's right wrist and bolted from the apartment. Outside and at the stairwell to the roof he released Momo's wrist and groaned. Your mother is really nice. Momo commented and Izuku exhaled and shrugged. I came early because I saw what you did last night and I wanted to see you. Oh and do this. She said as she took hold of his shirt front and leaned towards him. Once again pressing her lips against his. This time for a longer kiss. Parting she smiled at him and placed her forehead against his. Peering into his eyes. Thank you for saving the old woman's cat. That was so sweet. Izuku smiled. He was still in somewhat shock that again Momo had kissed him and he really liked it. Still not fully understanding why she wanted to spend time with him. Deciding that eventually he would ask he gestured towards the roof. Then led Momo upstairs onto the roof. Once on the roof, Izuku pulled out a 2x8 board that had several 2 feet 2x4 two boards attached to it. This is my punching board. Over there where those pipes are, is where I do some combat gymnastics. Izuku informed Momo, hoping desperately to change the subject or what happened downstairs. Momo touched the board and then turned towards him. Can you show me? Momo asked, noticing the change of subject and thinking it funny. Stepping up to the board, he began to lightly hit the boards and within seconds increased speed. She could the blows on the board, then he hit the boards harder and harder. At three different times putting his fist through the 2x8 board, she watched wide-eyed as he broke the 2x4 boards in half with little effort, finally kicking the 2x8 and the board split almost in half. Wow, she gasped and went to touch the board where it was splintered and broken. Are you sure you do not have a quirk, because that is really impressive? Momo said as she pointed to the holes in the boards and the broken 2x4s. Nope, no quirk. This is all me. Izuku replied and Momo smiled over at him. Want to go to the movie now? He asked and she nodded, then reached out and took his hand in hers, interlacing her fingers. He looked down at her hand on his. It is our second date and I want to hold your hand. Momo informed him and then led him back down the stairs, smirking with satisfaction. Having Jaspers drive them to the theater, she sat in the back seat with Izuku, still holding his hand. When they arrived, she told Jaspers to come back in two hours and pick them up. After getting tickets to Jumanji 2, buying popcorn and two sodas, Momo took him inside and sat in the back row. Normally she sat in the center of the theater, but in the back she could ensure no one disturbed them. Once they sat and the credits began, she pulled his hand that she held over her shoulders and placed her head against him. He stared at her with shock, just making myself comfortable. If you do not like it I can let go. She asked him and he shook his head. Momo smiled contently and looked at the screen. Not really interested in the movie. To her the movie was not long enough and when the lights came back on, they stood and left the theater. She clasped his hand tightly in hers, refusing to let it go. Outside while waiting for Jaspers, Momo began to consider how she could get Izuku to go out with her again. Then to her delight, there was one other place that I trained. I suppose you would like to see where that is. Izuku informed her and she nodded enthusiastically. I cleaned up the seafront beach. Perhaps tomorrow you would like to see it. He told her and she smiled. Yes I would like that. Momo told him. That is date number three. She stated and he rolled his eyes. Pains of being a hero. Sad night was more entertaining for Izuku. As he moved across the roofs of the buildings. He was feeling a little disappointed. There was not any of the lowlifes or thugs out and about. Smirking he knew why. They were hiding from him. When he was about to call it an early night and go home. He heard a woman scream. Finally. Izuku said in exasperation. Running towards the scream, reaching a ten-story building he peered down and below him was a woman being pushed against a wall by a medium-sized man. The man held a knife threateningly at the woman, but Izuku thought it looked a little strange. Even though the woman was screaming, she did not look completely afraid. Glancing about he did not see anyone so it was not another trap. 
down below him. The thug rose his knife-welding hand higher and was about to bring it down into the woman. Without hesitation, Izuku attached a line and jumped, skillfully and lightly landing behind the thug, slapping the knife out of the thug's hand. Then he grabbed the man and hauled it up by his neck one-handed, slamming him against a nearby wall. The man stared down at Izuku with fear, as he looked down into the red glowing eyes of Alman. The woman moved back and Izuku glared at the man. I hunger, Izuku said hissing slightly and opening his mouth to reveal the little accessory that he had added since yesterday. A set of the plastic cheap dime store vampire teeth. Wanting to play on the rumors that Alman was a demon or vampire that hunted the criminals and lowlife scum for nourishment, either taking their blood or their souls. The thug cried out in a whimper, glancing over at the woman in panic. No, the woman screamed lurching towards Izuku and the would-be thug. That is my cameraman, Eddie Tang. I am Diana Feldings for Channel 23. Diana pleaded in grief, not wanting her friend fed upon by the Alman creature. Izuku glared over at the reporter and hissed again. Then back at Eddie, who wept and clasped his hands around the wrist that was holding him a foot of the ground. With another hiss, Izuku dropped the man spun towards Diana. Do not ever do this again. Izuku stated and then activated the line into the reporter and cameraman. It seemed that he flew upwards towards the darkened roof of the buildings. Below Diana knelt next to Eddie as he cried. A puddle began to form around him as he finished pissing himself. Diana glanced upwards and shivered in fear. After a few moments she helped Eddie stand and he retrieved the hidden camera. Holding it closely to him, sat a morning. Diana was on Channel 23 News with a special report. Momo sat on the edge of her bed and watched the report, listening intently. This is Diana Feldings. Last night in an attempt to gain real-time footage of Alman, I and my cameraman Eddie Tang placed ourselves in mortal danger by conducting a fictitious mugging, during which Alman arrived and Eddie almost lost his life to the creature. This video you about to see is raw coverage and I would suggest this is not appropriate for the younger viewers. Diane said over the television and Momo could see that the reporter was still shaken up by whatever they were about to show. Watching the coverage and at the end of the video, Momo felt like laughing as Diana knelt by Eddie on the recorded video. He was crying and whimpering, while sitting in a puddle that previously was not there. Turning off the television, she headed to her closet, selecting an appropriate dress for walking on the beach, smiling as she held up the sundress. This should get his attention, Momo stated, taking it with her to the bathroom, taking a shower and then putting her air into a more subtle style, putting underwear on and then the sundress on she stared at herself in the mirror, smiling, oh yeah this should really get his attention, leaving the bathroom to put on her shoes, ready to go. Walking down the stairs she felt the dress flow around her knees and when she neared the bottom of the stairs her father saw her. No way, not a chance Momo are you going out of this house dressed like that, her father stated as he rose from a chair in the living room and stalked towards her. Momo paused slightly and looked at herself in the mirror. The yellow and white striped sundress covered her chest, showing a good portion of her cleavage and hung by one strap over the back of her neck. The back of the dress stopped just above her bra strap. Her shoulders were bare and to her the sundress was not inappropriate or that revealing. Ignoring her father, she rechecked her makeup and smiled. Where do you think you are going dressed like that? Her father asked. Not pleased at how she was not really paying attention to him. I have a date with Izuku. He is taking me for a walk on a beach. So what is better than me wearing a sundress? Momo said satisfied that her hair and makeup were all in place. A-S-H-I. Her father bellowed and in seconds Momo's mother stood at the top of the stairs. What Takai? Oh hi Momo, you look nice. Going out with that boy again. Momo's mother asked and Momo nodded, reaching past her father to pick up her small jacket that completed outfit. The jacket was thin and did not button up, but it matched her dress. Slipping it on she smiled. Her father still barred her way out the door. Have a nice time dear, say hello for me. Her mother Ashi said as she stepped down and gave Momo a hug. Thanks mom, I should be back later around 5 or 6. Bye. Momo ducked around her irate father and he glared at Ashimomo, his wife. She was outside but could hear her father. How can you allow this? I for one do not like how she is so set on being with this boy. Takai stated and Ashi chuckled. Oh Takai, Momo really likes him and I think that he is perfect for her. He is good to her. Ashi said calmly then returned back upstairs, leaving Takai to scowl. Having Jaspers drop her off in front of Izuku's apartment building, Momo saw him waiting. She gave a soft chuckle as she walked up to him and he turned to look at her. His eyebrows rose as his eyes widened. Whoa, Izuku gasped out as he looked her up and down, shaking his head slightly, but keeping his eyes on her. That is some outfit. He wheezed out and she smiled. I just wanted to look nice. So how do I look? Momo asked as she took his right hand and he was in too much shock to notice. Swallowing he blinked finally. Well, Izuku stammered out and Momo moved closer waving her hand in front of his face. Blinking again he exhaled. You look absolutely beautiful. 
He almost whispered. Peering into his eyes she leaned closer and touched his lips with hers. A brief embrace that only lasted a few seconds. She stepped back and smiled again and he finally was able to do more than stare at her. That is exactly what I wanted to hear. Momo stated then glanced down the street towards the seaside beach. Let's go see the beach. That is the whole reason I wore the sundress, she said, not telling him that she actually wore the dress in her attempt to make him her boyfriend. Interlacing her fingers into his, they began to walk down the street. She paid no attention to the stairs and following gazes she received from other men and boys as they walked. In truth she was used to the inappropriate attention and reactions she somehow attracted. Right now the only one she really wanted to pay attention to her was holding her hand. Once on the beach she gazed all along the clean and pristine beach. You did this, she asked as she continued to look down the beach and seeing others enjoying the now clean beach. Yes, it took me about three months, but I used this as a means to train, building up my muscles and strength. Izuku informed her then pointed over to the sidewalk several meters away. That is where I met the one that taught me how to be Almond. He whispered to her and she nodded, giving him a gentle tug. Let's walk along the beach for a bit and talk, Momo said and Izuku did not move. He needed to know why Momo was so interested in spending time with him. Why she had kissed him three times, even though he really enjoyed it. To him Momo Yoyorazu was way out of his league. What's wrong? She asked and he shook his head. I need to understand why you want to be with me. Want to go out with me? I mean Momo, you are way better than me. You are beautiful and I am just me. Hell I know your father thinks I am not even worthy to be in the same room as you. I tend to agree with him. Izuku said to her and she gave a slight chuckle, then turned towards him. I like you Izuku. You are caring and gentle. Momo stated and then she saw his expression. Well caring and gentle to me. Criminals and lowlifes are a different thing altogether. Raising her hand that held as she looked at their hands. I like you because you are gentle. You are holding my hand gently and we both know that you could easily break every bone in my fingers. But you hold my hand tenderly. She moved his hand towards her and kissed his hand. You care about me, I can tell. Otherwise you would not be so nice to me when I sort of trick you into going out with me. That and when I kiss you, I can feel that you do care and like me. She put her right arm around his neck and touched her lips once again to his, kissing him gently and he returned the kiss just as gently. She smiled and he exhaled slowly. Then he smiled at her. You are way too good for me, Momo and we both know it. Izuku stated and Momo laughed, shaking her head and then released his right hand so she could move both of hers around his waist, pulling him closer to her. No it is the other way around and as to what my father thinks, i rather be with you than any of those he thinks I should want as a boyfriend. Momo replied and saw his expression with a sly smile. Yes Izuku I want to be your girlfriend and I want you as my boyfriend. So how about it? Do you want me to be your girlfriend? She asked and he stared at her with utter confusion. I guess I really do not have much of a choice do I since I really like you, but I'm totally confused on why you like me. Izuku admitted and that was enough for her. She moved her right hand up to his face and leaned forward kissing him again, using her other hand to take his right hand first and putting it around her, then moved her right hand down to do the same with his left, wanting him to get used to holding her. To her delight he did not resist and to her it felt really good to be held by him. As they parted she placed her forehead against his and peered into his green eyes. So from now on you are my boyfriend and I am your girlfriend, Momo declared, getting exactly what she wanted. Izuku is hers. Retaking his right hand with her left she gestured down the beach. Want to take that stroll now? He nodded and they began to walk hand in hand. She knew that tomorrow she could not even hint that they were now a couple. As they walked he became somewhat sullen. What's wrong now? She asked. He exhaled and grimaced. I am going to have to tell the class who I am. That is the only way this is going to work. But just the class, not the teachers. Izuku stated and Momo nodded with approval. They then discussed the plan for him to show and tell tomorrow before class started. Taking out her phone, she began to type into it. Then showed him the message asking all the other students of a one to be in class 45 minutes before class started. Alman wanted to have a word with them, prior to the Mr. Aizawa's arrival. Are you sure you want to do this? Momo asked and Izuku shrugged, then smiled at her. It is the only way, otherwise someone from our class is going to figure it out anyway. Unless you want them to believe that you are dating two different people. Alman and me, Izuku commented and Momo giggled, imagining the reaction she would from Toru and Mina. I do not really care, as long as both are you. Momo said and then smiled as he gave her hand a gentle squeeze. He checked his watch, looking back towards the apartment building three blocks away. My mom probably has lunch ready. She wants you to come to eat lunch, so we better head back. Izuku said and Momo smiled. They turned and walked back towards the appartment building. Monday morning, Izuku dressed as Alman entered the A1 classroom. Everyone was there. Momo when she arrived had been asked by all of her classmates why she sent the message for him and she refused to answer. Standing in front of the class he exhaled. I asked Momo to have you all here before Mr. Aizawa arrived. She has convinced me to trust all of you. 
so I am going to show and tell you who I am. But before I do, I want all of you to swear not to divulge to anyone who I am. Before anyone could Katsuki stood. If anyone does squeal and I will personally roast them. Katsuki threatened them angrily, glaring around the classroom with menace. To Izuku delight everyone including Minoru Minda swore. With some slight hesitation, Izuku rose his uniformed hands towards his head, pulling off the owl-shaped headpiece. Then as he was about to pull the mask off. Well Kaken you already know me. Izuku said as he removed the mask and everyone looked at him. But only Katsuki Bakugo stared with shock. No fucking way. It can't be. Katsuki stammered out, his eyes bulging as he slowly moved forward. Deku, he gasped out and Momo instantly corrected Katsuki. No Izuku Midoriya. Momo said as she nodded to those that looked back at her. Izuku is Alman. This caught Katsuki like a punch in the stomach. He kept shaking his head and grimacing. You can't be Alman. You just can't be. Katsuki repeated as he looked at his one-time friend, then saw Izuku shrug. If you would like, later you and I can go to the student challenge room and I can convince you that I am Alman. Izuku suggested and Katsuki smirked, holding his hands upwards towards Izuku in a sign of surrender. Fuck no, you already basically kicked my ass, I have no intention of having you do that again. Katsuki stated. He had noticed Izuku's confidence after telling him that they could go and spare against each other. At that moment he knew that Izuku was Alman. Prior Izuku would not even face him without wincing or cowering. But now his one-time friend was standing before him, ready to once again demonstrate that he was no longer Deku the Worthless. The silence was interrupted when Mina clapped her hands. Oh this is great. This means that either me or Toru can go out with him. Mina said with a huge smile on her face. Her yellow eyes sparkling as she looked at Izuku. Before she or Toru could ask, Momo in the back of the room spoke up. Nope, that is not going to happen. He has a girlfriend and she refuses to let him date anyone else. Momo stated and everyone turned to look at her, especially Mina and Toru. Now that really is not fair. Toru said her voice higher than normal. Neither me or Mina ever got a chance. Everyone in the class began to laugh and Izuku checked the time, putting his mask and headpiece back on. Five minutes later Mr. Aizawa entered and looked at the students. All of them were subtly looking at Alman who was sitting in his uniform instead of his dark clothes. Instantly guessing that they all knew who Alman is, Mr. Aizawa left without saying a word. Walking with purpose he headed for the principal's office, summoning Midnight and All Might to meet him there immediately. Entering the office, he almost ran into Midnight. Inside All Might was already there. He told them, My whole class now knows who Alman is. Iwaza blurted out and Principal Nezu just calmly looked at him. Did your students actually admit this? Nezu asked, with a small smile. He of course already knew who the mysterious young man was. After all it was the only way for Izuku to attend school here at the UA. Izuku had come up with the idea a few days later to list him as in one of the other classes other than a one-hero course. Now for anyone else, Izuku Midoriya was in the technical support class at the UA. Iwaza glared at the small administrator and shook his head. No they did not, but I can tell. Iwaza stated and then looked over at All Might and Midnight wanting them to suggest a course of action to be made. I think it is time that we all know who he really is. He demanded as All Might and Midnight nodded with approval. Nezu on the other hand shook his head. No, I believe that in time he will divulge to you who he is. In the meantime if he did inform his classmates it is his choice. Nezu said and Midnight smirked slightly. So if I understand you already know who he is. Midnight said and Nezu smiled. Would any of you like any tea? Nezu asked not answering Midnight as he gestured at the teapot that sat on his desk. All Might gave a short chuckle and rolled his eyes. Without saying a word, he turned and left the office. He had his own problems and he believed that Alman would be the solution. Walking towards the teacher's lounge, he entered and immediately reverted into the weaker form of Tashinori Yagi. He needed to rest for a few hours and regain his strength. Later he wanted to confront Alman with an offer. Returning to the A1 classroom, Awaza scowled at the class, deciding to confirm his suspicions now. I take it that you all now know who Alman is and that he swore you all to silence. He said in Kenya Ida stood. Yes sir. As class rep, it is my responsibility to inform you that none of us will divulge who Alman is or what he looks like. Tenya announced and Awaza grimaced. Then with an audible exhale. Fine. Tomorrow you all will arrive in class with your hero uniforms. Number 13. All Might and myself will be taking you to the training dome. There you will encounter possible real world situations. As for today. We will begin to discuss the hero guidelines that have been made to ensure that none of you when you become legal and licensed heroes will violate any laws, Aizawa said, then began to go over the material, appearing to accept what Tenya Ida had just told him, but secretly considering who he could manipulate into telling him what he wanted to know. When the lunch bell rang, Izuku stood and was going to go to the locker room. Spending four hours inside his uniform was starting to affect him. Not that it was uncomfortable or hot, it was just hard to sit in a desk chair for that long of a time. 
He kept sitting on his wing cape and that in itself made it hard to remain still. Telling Momo he would meet her at lunch, he ducked towards the locker room and almost ran into All Might. Can I have a word with you in private? All Might asked and then led Izuku down the corridor towards one of the teacher's lounges. Once inside All Might gestured for Izuku to sit, not looking at Alman, he stared out the window. What I am about to tell you must never be known by any other person. Understand, he said towards the wall, but intending it for Izuku. In time I will no longer be able to be All Might. At present I am only able to be All Might for a limited time. This caused Izuku to wince slightly, not fully understanding. We all have secrets, Izuku said and All Might chuckled, then looked over at Izuku and nodded. I suppose we do, All Might stated and then with a sullen expression he exhaled, turning back to the window. You being quirkless and being at the UA is unheard of. If it was possible for you to have a quirk, would you accept it? He asked and then waiting, hoping for the right reply. Silence remained in the room and All Might turned to make sure that Alman had not slipped away. What I am asking is if you could have a quirk would you want it? Again silence as Alman stood and gave a soft laugh. No sir, I do not think I would. No matter what the quirk would be, I do not think I need it. Izuku said firmly, seeing All Might's stoic expression. To tell the truth sir, in the past before I became Alman, I prayed to have a quirk. But now I know that I am better without it. Right now every scum, criminal and lowlife in the city is afraid of me. I like that. I like being Alman and if I had a quirk I do not think I could still be Alman. He told All Might and the large hero laughed loud and hard. You are probably right, young hero. I suspect you are better off without a quirk, even one like mine. All Might said with approval, but felt somewhat displeased that he could not pass the one for all to Alman. He believed that the young quirkless hero could be perfect to have the special quirk. With some reluctance, All Might opened the door and wished the young dark hero a good day. Not ready to give up yet, thinking perhaps that he could discuss it again with Alman. Finding Momo at lunch, Izuku sat down next to her. No one could see as he took her hand and interlaced his gloved fingers into hers. So what did All Might want? Shoto Todoroki asked as he looked over at the masked and hooded classmate. Izuku shrugged and gave Momo's hand a gentle squeeze as she did the same. It was really nothing. I think Iwaza told him that I had disclosed to you all who I am. He wanted to see if I would tell him as well. Izuku said, knowing that it was only a partial lie. He knew that for their three primary teachers, Eraserhead, Midnight and All Might all wanted to know who he was and what he looked like. Everyone in the school knew that the three teachers slash heroes wanted to know. But so did just about everyone in the school. Well they can wait until you are ready to tell them. Personally I would not until it is absolutely necessary. Say right on graduation day. Katsuki said as he put his tray down and sat. Izuku stared at him with shock. What? I have decided to sit at this table from now on. Is there a problem with that? He looked around the table and everyone shrugged. He then leaned slightly on the table, to let you know. When we are back in our neighborhood I will still treat you like shit, but know that it is just for show, so no one gets suspicious. He then leaned back and began to eat. Izuku understood instantly. If all of a sudden Kakan started to treat him decently, then those in their neighborhood would begin to wonder why, especially since Kakan had treated Izuku like dirt since both were six years old. Thank you Kakan, Izuku said and Momo winced but nodded with understanding. Just remember it is for show and do not lose it and beat the crap out of me. Katsuki added and everyone at the table began to laugh. Hey I am serious. I suspect that he could beat me into a bloody pulp within a few seconds. Then he too started to chuckle. The training dome, confrontation. Walking with the other students to the training dome. Izuku felt uncomfortable wearing his uniform in the daylight. It was not as effective during the day as it was at night where it could blend into the shadows and darkness. Shatashashi had made some more improvements to his uniform and he had not had a chance to try them out. One of the improvements was the eyepieces. They would now flash brighter by him touching a small switch that he could subtly touch on his belt. Another means of intimidation and to instill fear among those he had contact with. Another improvement was she had given him a new wing cape. Now it was a stronger material that if she was right could deflect small caliber bullets and resistant to most bladed weapons. Hello Earth to Almin, Momo said as she waved her hand in front of his masked face. Sorry I was just thinking about the new upgrades that someone made on my uniform. Izuku said to her as she smiled and leaned somewhat closer. He had not heard her or what she asked him a few minutes ago. That is all right. I was just asking you what you would like to do this Friday. I know my mother would like you over for dinner, Momo said and she noticed his mouth tighten into a frown. My dad won't be there. He has a meeting this Friday and will be out of town. She told him and he exhaled. Then he nodded slightly and she smiled. Stepping inside the dome, Eraserhead and Number 13 had told them that All Might would join the session later. The doors of the dome began to close and Izuku flung his cape away from his arms, going into a fighting stance. Eraserhead saw this and before he could ask, he noticed why Alman had done that. Down below the stairs was a man standing with hands all over his limbs, a black large creature and a flowing darkness. Then others began to appear and Eraserhead knew that they all were in trouble. 
Before Izuku could do anything the darkness surrounded them all and he was taken elsewhere. Dropping to the ground near the fake lagoon, he landed with his arms outspread and onto his left knee. Glancing back he saw Tsuyuasui and Minero Minta, returning his attention back to the 10 to 12 criminals that were now walking towards him. One of them paused. Shit Joey that is that Alman. The man that had paused, his voice laced with fear. He pointed at Izuku and glanced over at one that had to be Joey. The semi-large man going by Joey shook his head and glared over at the one that had spoken. Grow some balls Drake. There is eleven of us and one of him. Joey said angrily and as soon as they were about ten feet from Izuku, Joey's fingers grew into seven or eight foot long whips. But before the villain could use them, Izuku turned on another of the upgrades that Shadashashi had added to his uniform. Infrared vision. At the same time, he palmed and tossed two of his smoke bombs, denser ones that Mei Hatsum had just given him on Friday morning. A dense cloud of smoke enveloped the group of villains and Izuku moved. Joseph Andros alias Joey Lash tried to see through the smoke, but could not even see a foot in front of him. Hey close in. This asshole is trying to use the smoke against us, listening for the others to acknowledge him. But all he heard around him was grunts, small yelps and thuds or sounds of impacts. Say something you guys. He said loudly but all he heard was silence. The smoke began to clear after about a minute and Joey stumbled forward. Then to his horror he found the others. All were lying prone on the ground, face up or face down. What the fuck? He gasped out and began to jerk around looking for the one that had just decimated his group. I left you for last. You are going to tell me who your leader is and what that big monster is. A menacing harsh voice said to Joey's left and out of nowhere. Almond stepped out of the dissipating smoke. He dropped the one he was dragging forward with him and Joey saw it was Drake. The man looked dead to Joey and he wondered if Almon had fed upon him. Joey had heard that this Almon creature was a vampire. He was reluctant to say anything. You on the other hand will tell me what I want to know. Almon stepped closer and before Joey could lash out with his whips, some type of ropes encircled him and his arms were trapped, tied and all he saw from Almon was him or it throwing something at him. Tipping over he stared up at Almon and whimpered. For Joey he never really believed the rumors that Almon was some type of demon or vampire. But to see the creature in real life, he now believed it. After tossing the smoke bombs, Izuku rushed forward and thanks to the upgrade could see all of the approaching villains. Taking them down was easy, since it seemed that none of them had a very impressive quirk. He had planned on asking the one identified as Drake some questions. But when he confronted the terrified man, Drake fainted. So he decided to use Drake another way, intimidation against his friend Joey. Dragging him out of the smoke, he dropped Drake so that Joey would think that he had fed upon him or took his soul. In essence to let Joey believe that his friend was dead. Though right now Drake was unconscious. But upon seeing Joey's expression, he had achieved what he wanted. When Joey prepared to lash out with his whips, Izuku released the bolo that he had been swinging above his head. It easily wrapped around Joey and now the man was staring up at him with total fear. Izuku really liked making villains afraid of him. It made it easier to gain answers. As he leaned down, I do not know. All we were told is that we would get a chance to take All Might down. Joey blabbered out as he stared up at the creature before him. Seeing the long white fangs he whimpered, Please do not feed on me. Joey begged, as he silently began to dictate the Lord's Prayer or what he could remember of it. He had not gone to church in years. I do not believe you. Now speak, Izuku said with a bit of anger in his voice, grabbing Joey's shirt front and hauling him upwards towards him, mere inches from his face. Joey began to cry. Okay, okay, our leader is Tamura Shigaraki. He is the one covered with hands and that big one is called Namu. I do not know much about him, but we have been promised that it can defeat All Might. Joey blabbered out as quickly as he could, wanting Almon to get away from him. Then they both heard a commotion out on the fake lagoon and to Joey's relief he was dropped back onto the ground. He laid there, feeling his heart pounding in his chest. Blissfully a minute later he passed out, striding forward towards the lagoon. Izuku saw that a large number of water-type villains were encircling a fake yacht, trying to get at Tsuyuasui and Minero Minta. Raising his right arm at an angle towards the dome roof, he fired his grappling spike. It almost did not make it. With a jerk he was pulled upwards over the lagoon. Rising higher, he fired another grappling spike just as the first one pulled free. With an exhale of relief, he swung over the water, waving at Suyu and then he pointed down at the villains. She stared at him for a moment and then nodded, grabbing the weeping Minoro and waited, taking out another item that Mei Hatsum had given him. A low-yield concussion explosive. With a toss he sent the bomb into the water where the villains gathered and when it exploded, it sent up a wave away from the detonation. At that moment Suyu leapt, carrying Minoro. Reversing his swing, Izuku followed Tsuyu into his delight Minoro finally came out of his panic and began to throw his sticky balls into the water. When the water receded the villains started to stick together. Landing with a roll, he stood and looked over at Tsuyu and Minoro. Are you alright? Izuku asked and Minoro started crying again. 
With a disappointed scowl, Suyu nodded. Yes, Ribbit, though it was lucky you came along. Suyu stated and then glanced about, now not even looking at the shorter Minoru as he wept with relief. A flash off to the right gained their attention. That must be Denki, Ribbit, she declared and Izuku gave a curt knob, then looked back towards the entrance. Okay, you two head for the entrance. Try to get out and summon help. I am going to make sure the others are not in danger. Izuku ordered the two and Minoru whimpered. Maybe we should stick together. Maybe hide until after the villains are gone. Minoru said. Both Izuku and Tsuyu basically ignored him. She gave Izuku a thumbs up and grabbed the shorter Minoru and began to drag him towards the entrance to the dome. He protested slightly then followed her reluctantly. After making sure that the two was not accosted, Izuku turned and sprinted towards the flash. His thoughts focused on Momo and hoping that she was alright. To his dismay it seemed the source of the flash was considerably further than he expected. Fight among the rocks. Momo and Kyoko knelt under the extra thick blanket that she had just created, now concentrating on replacing her uniform top, not wanting anyone to see her bare breasts. Denki was moving about in a daze with a ridiculous expression on his face. Standing now covered she glanced over at Kyoko. Both were somewhat thrilled that they had done so well against the villains that surrounded them just a few minutes ago. Then before either could react, another villain appeared and threatened to end Denki if they did not surrender. At that moment the two were out of options and then Momo saw Izuku running towards them. Her heart began to pound harder seeing her boyfriend rushing towards them. But then she realized that he was still a considerable distance away and probably would not be able to help them until it was too late. Though she hoped that she could somehow stall long enough for Izuku to arrive. But she doubted that the villain would wait that long. Thankfully a bullet slammed into the villain and the situation was over. Izuku arrived a minute later. He was breathing hard and Momo knew he had been running as hard as he could. She felt tears sting her eyes as she stared at him. Sorry, I should have run faster. Izuku wheezed out and inhaled deeply, leaning on his knees and staring at Momo knowing he should have been here sooner to protect her. If you three got hurt it would be my fault. Momo shook her head. No harm no foul. Momo stated and then stepped closer to him. Do not try to get all protective of me. I am here to be a hero and danger is part of being a hero. She whispered, then smiled and gave him a small punch on the left arm. Come on we better get to the entrance and make sure that this is over. She said loudly and while Kyoko guided Denki in the right direction they headed for the entrance. Regrouping and situation over. Leaning against the dome. Izuku tried to remain in the limited shadow of the dome. Slightly out of view of the responding police. His fellow students were blocking him so that no one really could see him. Dozens of small-time villains were being led out of the dome in handcuffs and then he spotted Joey. The man was demanding to see a priest instead of a lawyer, wanting his sins resolved and penance for his soul. A couple of the others that had been with Joey were demanding the same, stating that they had been attacked by the Almond creature and were mortally afraid that it had fed upon them or had taken their souls. Izuku chuckled lightly at hearing that. It felt good to know that the most villains were deathly afraid of him. Glancing over at the trees, he saw the Namu creature again and scowled. Upon hearing about the battle between All Might and the monster, Izuku knew that he would not have stood a chance against the beast, no matter how good he was at hand-to-hand -hand fighting. He had heard that All Might had to go all out against it and barely won. When Midnight stepped over to him, he turned to look at her. All Might would like to see you. He is at Recovery Girl's nurse's office. She told him and he nodded, silently slipping away and around the dome. He and Momo would meet up later after school and make sure that they both were completely fine. Arriving at the main building in the nurse's office, Izuku entered what appeared to be a hospital room with four hospital-type beds. On one was a skinny man with bandages wrapped around his waist. An intravenous tube was tapped to his right arm. I was supposed to meet All Might here, Izuku said and the man smiled. I am All Might. I told you that I am near the end of me being able to be All Might. Tashinori Yagi stated as he gave a small smile. My name is Tashinori Yagi and I need to talk to you about something vastly important. He gestured to a nearby chair and Izuku sat, then listened to Tashinori. An hour later, Izuku stood and went to the window. What he had been told was remarkable and if true was very tempting. I just can't, I am sorry. I can't do it, Izuku said firmly, still convinced that he did not need a quirk even one as spectacular as this one for all that Tashinori had just told him about. There has to be others that would be more interested and suitable than me. He said to the skinny man that was laying back on the bed. Tashinori shook his head. None that I have found yet. Listen Alman, you have the spark that would make one for all into something beyond what I have done with it, maybe even more than the ones that had it before. Please at least think about it. Tashinori asked and Izuku closed his eyes and reluctantly agreed, leaving the wounded man to rest. Returning to the classroom to find out that classes had been suspended until tomorrow. Changing in the locker room into his dark clothes, A stepped out of the room and someone collided into him. Arms wrapped around him fiercely, squeezing him tightly. He already knew who it was. Momo, if we are going to keep our relationship a secret you have to stop hugging me so tightly. 
Izuku told the dark-haired girl that had her head borrowed against his back, refusing to let him go yet. No one else is here. Otherwise I would not do this. Momo muttered into his back, then stopped and moved around so that he could hold her. She wanted to be comforted and held, hugging him again. She was delighted when he put his own arms around her and they continued to hug. She placed her face against his right shoulder and closed her eyes. At that moment she hated the hood and mask, because she wanted to see and caress his face. But she knew that would have to wait until later. Can we leave I really want to be with Izuku right now? She asked and Izuku nodded, using her phone to tell Jaspers to pick her up later. They had walked to the train station about 10 feet apart and as Izuku slipped into some nearby bushes he re-emerged not wearing his hood or mask anymore. It had been so quick that no one would have even noticed. Moving closer she took his hand and interlaced her fingers into his. Smiling at him, she leaned against him. Much better. She whispered to him and they went to wait for his train. She was going to go with him back to his apartment so that they could sit and be together for a couple of hours. The train arrived and they stepped into the passenger car. Glancing about Izuku frowned. There was only one seat open and he gestured for her to sit down. No you sit. She ordered and maneuvered him towards the seat. Once he sat down, she did as well on his lap, putting her left arm around his shoulders. Comfortable? Izuku asked and Momo smiled down at him, nodding, completely. Momo replied giving him a gentle squeeze with her left arm, thoroughly enjoying sitting across his lap. She at first worried that she might be a little heavy for him, since they basically were the same size, but knew that he was stronger than he looked. That included his legs. How long is the train ride from here to your apartment? She asked and he smiled. About half an hour. Before then another seat should open up. Izuku told her and she frowned slightly. What you do not like me sitting on your lap? Momo asked and he shook his head negatively. Good because I am content to just stay right here. Glancing around she did not see anyone looking at them. Leaning slightly down she pressed her lips against his, touching his lips with hers. Just long enough to illustrate to him that she was thrilled to be right where she was. Arriving at his station, she reluctantly got off his lap and retook his hand. Once inside his and his mother's apartment they moved towards the couch. Want something to drink or eat? Izuku asked and Momo shook her head, then glanced about. Oh my mom is probably at the grocery store. He told her and she pulled him down to sit next to her. She put her arms around his neck and held him tightly to her. She just wanted to hold him for a while and feel his own arms around her. After his mother arrived, she stayed for dinner and then called Jaspers to pick her up. Outside the apartment she held him and kissed him once more. Riding away a few minutes later in the backseat of the car, she glanced back seeing him give her a wave. She returned it. She had spoken much during the short date at his home. Her thoughts were on other things and not what had happened at the training dome. When they arrived at his apartment his mother was not present she felt the temptation to take him into his bedroom. She knew that it was too soon for them to be so intimate, but her hormones and the fact that she was so attracted to him at that moment almost overwhelm her common sense. Not able to see him any longer, she faced forward and smiled. Eventually soon perhaps they both would be ready and that made her feel excited. In class the next morning she sat and smiled over at Izuku. He smiled back. She was so tempted to reach over and take his hand, but she knew that the substitute teacher could be arriving at any minute. To everyone's surprise Mr. Aizawa came in. Both of his arms were bandaged and in casts. He then told them about the sports festival in almost two weeks, telling them that they would all have the next week off to train and prepare. Izuku passed her a note to meet him at the closet as soon as they were dismissed. She smirked over at him, wondering if he was planning on doing some type of surprise intimate encounter. Later when she met him there they slipped inside and she was dismayed that it was not what she was hoping for. I will not be competing at the festival, Izuku told her and she stared at him with shock. Why not? Momo asked with curiosity and disappointment. Izuku reached up and removed his hood and mask. How would I compete? Would I compete as Izuku or Alman? I am not ready to tell the world that I am Alman. Izuku told Momo and she nodded with understanding, but she was still disappointed. She would love to see her father's face when he discovered that the boy he thought was weak and not good enough for her was Alman. All right I guess that makes sense, Momo said and bit her bottom lip, staring into his green eyes. Can I ask you a favor? She added and he nodded. Of course I will be there to route for you. Izuku saw her shake her head. Then she told him reluctantly hoping that he would not say no. Teach me how to fight. I mean not that way you can't. But maybe enough karate and judo so that I can do better at the festival. Momo said and Izuku nodded. I can do that. So we have a whole week. But you should also work out a strategy on how you are going to compete. Izuku suggested and Momo agreed. She could not continually create items. Not unless she snacked almost constantly to replace her fat cells. She needed an edge and that involved learning how to fight. She did know some combat skills but those were limited and if Izuku could improve them then she would have a better chance at the sports festival. Thank you. Now since we can start on Monday morning, 
I think my boyfriend should take me to dinner tonight and perhaps a movie. Momo stated and Izuku smiled and rolled his eyes. I suppose I should take my girlfriend out on a date. Otherwise she might get upset at me. Izuku replied and Momo nodded. So should I meet up with her around 5pm at the usual place? He asked and Momo nodded. That would be fine. See you later then. Momo then opened the door of the closet while Izuku put his mask back on and his hood up. Once she made sure it was clear she headed towards the main entrance to be picked up by Jaspers. She had at least two hours to get ready and meet Izuku in front of his apartment. Tonight was another casual dress date and though that meant perhaps jeans and a t-shirt, she wanted to look good for him. Training days. Not telling her parents that Izuku was coming over, Momo waited at the main gate for him. There was an exercise room over by the pool in the backyard and she believed that would be the perfect place for Izuku to teach her. When she saw him walking down the entrance road to the driveway he raised his hand and waved. She waved back and then walked towards him, meeting him almost halfway. Stopping briefly he leaned over and put his hands on his knees, resting a moment. Wow that is a long driveway. He commented as he peered back and frowned. It had taken him close to an hour from the main road to that of the main gate to Momo's home. Maybe I should bring my bike and ride it from the bus stop to here. He said as she chuckled. Sorry about that. But I think it would be best to train here in the exercise room. Perhaps I should have Jaspers pick you up at the entrance road. Momo told him and he shrugged. Then she took his hand, interlacing her fingers and led him through the gate, taking him towards the backyard into the a building that sat off to one side. It was about the size of a basketball court and inside Izuku saw that it was. On the floors was several padded mats with white ten-foot circles in the center. So how should we begin? She asked as she removed her sneakers and socks, taking off her sweatshirt jacket to reveal that she was wearing a white v-neck t-shirt. Izuku followed suit and removed his own sneakers and socks, removing his jacket as well and laying it down on top of his sneakers. Then they moved over the center of the white circles and Izuku began to show her different judo throws. Karate would come after she learned some defensive throws and holds. Training days, spending the mornings conducting personal training and the afternoons with Izuku learning judo, Momo was wearing herself thin. Sitting back in the hot tub, she closed her eyes. She asked Izuku to join her in the large 10-foot jacuzzi but he declined, especially after she held up her bikini. She thought it funny on how bright red his face became as he stared at the swimsuit and stammered that he had to get back home. She was not ready to give up on him joining her for a nice long hot soak. After all she was extremely stubborn and she would not admit it to him yet. She loved him and hoped that he felt the same, exhaling with relief as the hot bubbles eased her sore muscle. Dipping under the water for a few seconds she came back up and then climbed out of the tube. No rest for the weary. She said to herself, she needed to eat and build up her fat cells. Pulling on a rope she headed to the house and the kitchen. She only had four more days and then on Monday the festival would begin. Friday morning she spent her mornings reading the molecular structures of possible useful items that she could create for the challenges during the festival. With a tray of assorted high cholesterol food nearby, she began to create those items and then deciding if she would use them or not. After that she would run for two miles and work out in the exercise room. By the time she showered and put on clean sweatpants and t-shirt, Izuku would arrive. An hour later she was facing him. With a small lunge she grabbed his wrist and elbow. But before she could throw him, he reversed and started to throw her. Then realizing she was not going to fall right paused and stopped her from completely falling hard on her ass and back. Momo, what was that? Izuku asked her as she peered up at him with embarrassment. The first two days he had taught her how to fall and she had just screwed up. I guess I am tired and was not thinking. Momo explained as she winced. Her shoulders down to her lower back now felt stiff and sore. She began to rub the sore muscles and he shook his head. Lay down, face down. Izuku ordered her and she did as instructed. With her face towards him, she could feel the coolness of the mat on her left cheek and exposed skin. He then knelt besides her and started to rub and knead her shoulders. She closed her eyes moaning with satisfaction. He continued to massage her shoulders and then down her back. She reveled in the massage and wished he would never stop. Oh that feels so good. Momo purred with relief, feeling like she could go to sleep from his ministrations. After several minutes he stopped and she exhaled. Still awake. Feel better? Izuku asked and Momo smiled, remaining on the floor. Yes, remind me to have you give me a massage more often. That was amazing. Momo commented as she slowly rose and sat across from him, with an audible sigh. Okay I am better. Shall we continue the lesson? She asked and Izuku shook his head. No, I think you are too tired to concentrate on doing any more today. Izuku told her and she had to agree. She was tired and if she kept pushing herself she was going to hurt herself. Or worse be unintentionally hurt by Izuku. How about we both get cleaned up? Get something to eat in the kitchen and watch a DVD movie in the screening room. Momo suggested and Izuku checked his watch and nodded. He had at least six hours before he could go out and make Almond's presence known. Sounds good. Izuku stood and helped her up. 
They separated and each headed for one of the adjoining locker rooms to shower and then come back. Momo came out reluctantly and frowned. She did not have any makeup on and her hair was not styled. Then when he came out and smiled, she stopped worrying about if she looked plain or not. Taking his hands and interlacing their fingers, they headed for the house. After getting a couple of sandwiches from the cook, she led him to the entertainment screening room. Inside Izuku was impressed about actually seeing a 100-inch screen television. So any older movie you want to see? Momo asked as she pointed towards racks of DVDs and Izuku shrugged. She pulled one of her own personal favorites, Grown Ups 2, putting it in the DVD player. She dimmed the lights and guided Izuku over to the love seat couch. They set their plates down and they began to eat as the movie started. After eating she leaned back and he put his arm around her and she looked at him with delight, pulling her feet up and sitting leaning heavily on him, placing her hand onto his chest near her face. The other she slipped around behind him. Before he could ask, she had fallen asleep. He tried for a couple of minutes to awaken her, but she was just too tired. When the movie ended, Izuku tried to subtly and easily remove her from holding him so tightly. Instead she moved her right arm around him to join the other, tightening her grip upon him. Momo, the movie is over. I should go. You need to get some real sleep in your bed. Izuku said and she remained holding him, not awakening. Inhaling he reached down and tapped her gently. Momo, Momo. He then gave her a gentle shack and she stirred, opening her eyes and then closing them. In an MPHF, Momo grumbled and then slowly opened her eyes. Staring up at him she smiled. You make a great pillow. She commented and squeezed him tightly. Then with a reluctant sigh, released him. He stood and then did something that delighted Momo to no end. He leaned down and gently touched his lips to hers. For a short kiss, but he leaned back up and she beamed at him. I think you are overdoing it on the training for the festival. You might want to take it easy tomorrow. Izuku suggested and Momo nodded. Okay, sounds like a plan. Perhaps instead I will spend the whole day with my boyfriend. Momo said and then winked at him. That sounds like a good idea. I suppose that I should do that as well. Izuku replied and then smiled. Say around 9 a.m., breakfast at my place. Momo nodded again. See you tomorrow then. With that said he left and Momo watched him go out the door. She exhaled and laid down, deciding to just sleep on the couch tonight. The sports festival, standing in the shadows of the A1 student seats, Izuku tried to remain unseen. He was there to route for his class and Momo, not compete, after the race and when Minoru Minda tricked Momo into making cheerleader outfits for all of the girls, then put them on, Izuku decided that it was time to have a word with the little pervert, though he had to admit that Momo did look good in her outfit. Still eventually Minoru would go to far and generally Izuku was not the jealous type, but Momo was his girlfriend. Later one of the private rooms. I cannot believe I lost to Fumikage Takoyami. I thought I had a perfect strategy worked out. Momo said as Izuku held her from behind with his arms in front of her. She leaned back and smiled, not really feeling that upset. Not if it meant that she received consolidation from him. Next year you will kick his ass. Izuku said and she smiled, then kissed him on his right cheek. Without warning Shoto Todoraki entered and saw the two leaning against one of the walls. Izuku had his headgear and mask off and Shoto stared at them with shock. Oh I thought this room was unoccupied. Shoto said and Izuku could see something was wrong with him. Wait Shoto, what is wrong? You do not seem ready to fight against Katsuki. Izuku asked and Shoto looked down at the floor. Anger seemed to emanate from him as he exhaled sharply. My father is here. He is hoping that I will finally use my left side. I would prefer not to, since that side of my quirk is from him. Shoto stated and Izuku started to laugh at him. Momo frowned and elbowed him in the side. That is not funny. Momo said sternly and Izuku continued to laugh. It is funny, it is so funny that it is hysterical. Izuku said mostly to Shoto. You are so insecure about using something that you were born with that you are not going to use it just because you do not like your father. That is beyond stupid. He said and Shoto glared at him. Think about this Shoto. You only use your right side since it from your mother. You honor her by doing that. Then you refuse to use your left to dishonor your father. Both sides of you are from your mother and father. Who cares which is which, it is now your quirk to use. So use it. Later find a way to balance yourself, so that you can be who you are and not what your father wants you to be. Shoto listened and thought about what Izuku had told him. I guess I have some thinking to do. Shoto told Izuku and went to find another private room to think. With the sports festival over, temporary internships were offered. Izuku once again declined to participate. Instead he decided to keep an eye on Tenya Ida, worried that Tenya would do something rash. The hero killer stain, following Tenya from a rooftop. Izuku became alarmed when he saw Tenya attempt to take on the hero killer. Taking out his phone, he put in the address and then grappled a line to the roof. Tenya did not stand a chance against the hero killer and Izuku had to react quickly. Swinging down, Izuku slammed into the hero killer just before the psychopath could plunge his sword into Tenya. Bouncing off the hero killer's chest, Izuku backflipped to a fighting stance. So another foolish hero comes to interfere with my destined right. 
The hero killer stated as he staggered back from the impact, swinging his sword around and Izuku easily ducked under the blade, swinging a side kick to the killer's legs, but missed when the hero killer jumped over the kick. Izuku spun backwards and grabbed a broken broomstick, snapping it in half with his right knee and then held one half in his left and the other in his right, the left at mid-level to his waist and the right higher above his head, sliding his right foot behind him. Oh this is good. It appears one of you knows how to fight. Now you will use your quirk to prove that you are no better than the rest. Stain snarled and raised his sword. I do not have a quirk, hero killer. So whenever you are ready, Izuku said to the man as he readied himself to fight, waiting for the hero killer to attack. But Stain remained where he was, seeming to stare at Izuku with shock and wonder. Who are you boy? Stain asked as he sidestepped then smiled when Izuku did the same. A small smile spread across his lips. Alman, and you are the hero killer. Now you have a choice. Fight and be defeated or flee and I will hunt you down. Izuku said menacingly and Stain gave a short blood-curdling laugh. Then he lunged and Izuku blocked the sword cut with his left stick, swinging the right in a slash to the killer's head. Stain dodged the blow and reverse cut with the sword. Izuku blocked it with the right and punched forward with the left. The fight was on and both could see the other's measured skills, leaping back away, while dropping the left stick that no longer could be used to block with. Izuku grabbed and threw one of his tranquiler darts at Stain, aiming for the killer's shoulder. Stain blocked the dart with his sword and smiled with delight. Tenya glared up at the hero killer then over at Izuku. Alman leave. The hero killer is mine. I need to kill him. Tenya complained and Izuku grimaced, believing that Tenya was not thinking rational. Shut up Tenya. I have to concentrate. Izuku ordered as he reached behind him and then swung a set of bolos at Stain. He instantly evaded the rope and weights then lunged forward, and Izuku saw it. Stain was not trying for any type of lethal attacks. What is the matter hero killer? Why are you trying not to kill me any longer? Izuku asked and Stain smiled widely. You are worthy of the title of hero. Those others are not. They are nothing but fakes and charlatans. While you, you are what emphasizes what a hero should be. The hero killer replied and Izuku shuddered, knowing for certain that the hero killer was insane. Reaching into another pouch unseen by the killer, he flung another surprise at the killer. Unfortunately the killer had thrown something also unseen. Spinning to avoid the incoming knife, it scratched his face. But the flash bomb that Izuku had thrown detonated and the hero killer was blinded. He screamed with anger as he swung blindly with his sword. Izuku knew the situation was bad, with Tenya and the other hero paralyzed for some reason. He could not really move too far from them. With speed that shocked Izuku for a second the killer jumped over all of them and landed on the other side of Izuku. The killer reached down and retrieved his knife. Watch out, Tenya yelled. Somehow he can paralyze someone just by tasting their blood. He said and before Izuku could do anything, he froze in place. The small drop of blood on the dagger the killer had thrown had been enough for him to use his quirk. It is a pity that I had to do that. I was enjoying facing someone that is worthy, but I cannot allow you to delay or stop me from doing my sacred duty. The hero killer stated as he smiled. Though you will not be harmed, Elman, you are the embodiment of what a true hero is. With a casual walk, the killer approached and Izuku strained to move. Just as the killer was within a few feet, the alleyway erupted in flames. Shoto Todoroki had arrived. From that point on the fight progressed and within a few moments the 301 students had defeated and captured the hero killer. Day 2 of the internship, disaster, being the only one with just a scratch. Izuku left Tenya and Shoto to be treated for their wounds. The fight with the hero killer had been almost an all-out brawl and in the end they defeated him. Now Izuku was essentially free to patrol the city while Tenya and Shoto were at the hospital. It was yesterday that the fight for their very lives almost cost Tenya and the other hero their lives. Now Izuku was basically wasting the day, waiting for Momo to be done so that they could spend some time together later. Finally noticing where he was he smiled. The genius agency operates in this district. I think I might go by and see how Kakin is doing. Izuku said to himself then he saw the commotion. Police were down below on the street and it seemed that they were all focused on a 30-story building. On the top floor was where everyone was staring upwards at and a man was on the balcony running across another building to get closer to see what was happening. Izuku saw Best Genist and Kakin were also on the balcony. Take it easy Mr. Clemens, we are here to help you, Best Genist said calmly, placing a reassuring hand on Katsuki and he could feel the tremors of anger pulsing through the young intern, keeping a good distance from Clemens. Bullshit, Clemens said angrily, his eyes directly on the small bundle in his arms. You just want to take my angel away from me. I won't let you, he stated, taking another step towards the edge of the balcony railing. Genus kept still and looked at the deranged man reassuringly. But Katsuki could not remain still any longer. Stepping forward he glared at Clemens. Enough of this. Give me that baby or I will blast your head off. Katsuki said with pure rage in his voice and small explosions began to emanate from his hands. Clemens stepped further back and raised the bundle he held above his head. 
Before Genus could react Clemens started to laugh insanely. If I can't of her, then no one can. Clemens said and then tossed the one-year-old child over the balcony. Both Katsuki and Genus lunged forward. Genus backhanded Clemens across the head while he laughed hysterically. Then they both saw a black shape streak by them, diving from one of the other roofs. What the? Genus asked and Katsuki knew the answer. It is Almon. Katsuki said and watched as Izuku dove towards the crying child, grabbing the bundle and with a hiss sent out one of his grapple spikes. Genus shook his head. The angle is wrong. Genus stated as he could only watch just like Katsuki. The spike hit the roof of another building and Almon began to swing downward. Holding the baby close to him left-handed, Izuku knew he was in trouble. He had dove after the falling baby at the wrong angle and all he could do is do what was necessary. Izuku could save himself. If he let go of the baby and deployed another spike in the opposite direction, he would not do that. Instead he spun around and held the baby girl tighter to him. Swinging down with the inertia of a swinging pendulum, Izuku glanced back and saw the parked car. There was no way to avoid it. With a sigh, he felt himself slam into the windshield in the top of the car denting inward the metal and breaking the glass. Running down the stairs with Genist in the lead, Katsuki feared the worst. That kind of hit into the car was not something someone would be able to walk away from. All Katsuki could think was, it was his fault. He screwed up. Bounding out the front door, they passed a police line and approached the car. Stepping closer Katsuki looked down at Alman, Izuku Midoriya. With shaking hands and arms, Izuku held out the small baby girl. She was wiggling and crying still. Ta, tech, take her. Izuku gasped out and Katsuki moved forward and took her from his hands. I, is she all right? Izuku asked and Katsuki peered down at the small girl's face. Yes, she is fine. This is all my fault, I screwed up. Katsuki blurted out, staring at one that was a true hero. Not someone like him, someone that let his anger, rage and impatience cause this disaster. Almond shook his head slightly. N, no. He did not throw her from the roof. Izuku said weakly and with a labored inhale, winced. Paramedics arrived and one of them frowned, then produced a backboard. Another set came in and one of them took the baby girl out of Katsuki's hands. He had not even noticed. Then mercifully Izuku passed out. Katsuki spun on his heel and closed his eyes. Genist placed a hand on his shoulder. Is there anyone we should contact? Genist asked and Katsuki nodded. Yes Momo Yoyorazu. She is at the Yuobami agency as an intern this week. I will do it, Katsuki said as he watched as the paramedics slowly took Alman and put him into an ambulance. It moved away heading for the government hospital to the north, the primary one that attended only heroes. Reaching into his pocket, he touched Momo's number and closed his eyes. This was going to be bad. Answering her phone, Momo grumbled. Katsuki was not someone she ever expected to have call her. As she listened her eyes widened and then without saying a word to either her fellow intern Itsuka Kendo or Yuobami, she bolted from the agency, hailed a cab and had the driver race to the government hospital. On the way she called Inko Midoriya, but someone had already called Izuku's mother. To Momo it felt like it took forever to arrive and as she almost bounded out of the moving cab, she threw $50 to the driver and ran. Inside she ran to the reception desk and after a few moments, headed for the trauma ward. Tears streamed her eyes as she neared the ward to find best genist, Midnight. All Might and a couple of her classmates in the waiting room. Any word? Momo asked Kayoko Jiro and the other girl shook her head. His mother is in there at the moment. Fumikage Takoyami said as he stood and glanced over at the closed door. Momo began to pace. Her thoughts on what they had told Izuku's mother, Inko, seeming to guess midnight approached. The government liaison put out that Izuku Midoriya was hit by a runaway car. All police officers, doctors, nurses and even the paramedics have been sworn to secrecy. Midnight told Momo as she reached out and placed her hand on the younger girl's shoulder. For the teachers of the UA it had become a shock to learn that Izuku Midoriya, who had failed the entrance practical exam was Alman. When the door opened and Ko emerged and upon seeing Momo, stepped over to her. Hugging Momo, the older woman exhaled. I need to speak with you, before you go in there. That is if you are going to go in there. Inko said sternly and then led Momo over to a secluded corner. If you go in there to see him, you are not to cry or show any pity. The doctors have told me that there is a 50 over 50 chance that he will walk again. But I know my son and any signs of weakness will do more damage than that car did. Cry and mourn out of his sight, but in there do not. She told Momo, then she inhaled. Izuku has asked me to tell you, that if you cannot handle him being hurt and want to just leave, he will understand. Momo glared at the door and she scowled. Not a chance in hell. I am going in there. Momo stated angrily, then looked back at Inko. They told you, didn't they? She asked and Inko chuckled, that my son is Alman. I knew for quite a while, Inko said proudly. Then seeing Momo's shocked expression, it was not hard to deduce, especially when he would sneak out his bedroom window at night. We are 25 stories up. He was either Alman or he was trying to be Spider-Man. She gave a soft laugh and Momo did as well. 
Then Inko hugged Momo again and then nodded, squaring her shoulders and taking a few breaths. Momo walked to the room door and entered. She saw Inko laying face up on the bed. He could see the door and when she walked in he looked first shocked and then delighted. What you think that little boo-boo you got is going to get you out of being my boyfriend? You are sadly mistaken, Izuku. You keep forgetting I am way too stubborn. Momo stated and then walked to the side of the bed and shook her head. You will do anything to get out of going to dinner at my house with my parents. He looked at her with a bit of confusion. That was tonight remember, dinner with my parents. He chuckled and she laughed. Well it worked didn't it? Izuku said and she frowned at him. I am going to walk again, I promise. He stated and she believed it. Though her thoughts were if Izuku said he was going to walk to China barefoot, she would tell him to bring her back some fortune cookies. Then she smiled mischievously at him. You better, I did not tell you yet. But in four months from this Friday, my father's company has a formal ball. I plan on taking you. That means you will have to wear a tuxedo and dance with me. So you better be able to or I am going to be really upset at you. Momo said sternly and he rolled his eyes. She then leaned over and kissed him, whispering into his ear afterwards. I love you. Izuku stared at her with shock. Then he smiled. I love you too. Izuku whispered back. Hope for the future. Standing in one of the corners of the waiting room, Tashinori Yagi alias All Might felt like a vulture waiting to strike. That or one of those ambulance chasing lawyers. He was waiting until all of Izuku's friends and classmates had come and gone, visiting him and finding out about his condition. Almost all of them had gone in to visit and then departed. Now all that remained was Momo Yorazu and she had left Izuku's hospital room since she arrived. Even Izuku's mother had not remained that long. Mainly due to she believed that Momo's presence was doing more for Izuku's spirits than she could. Very intelligent woman. All Might muttered. Then he checked the clock on the wall. Soon All Might would have to enter regardless if Momo was there or not. Glancing around the waiting room, he was relieved that finally Katsuki Bakugo had left. Sometime later All Might and Best Genist would have to have a word with the young man. Katsuki was still blaming himself for what had happened. An hour later he could not wait any longer. He once again was going to offer Izuku. One for all and hope the young man accepts, though now Izuku may not have a choice. Inside the hospital room, Momo had slipped beside Izuku on the bed. She had placed a pillow in between her and his side so that she did not accidentally roll onto him. Putting her head on his right shoulder, he had his arm around her while her right hand rested on his chest. He had invited her to lay down with him after she almost fell off the nearby chair. He actually tried to convince her to go home and get some sleep and she refused. She had a little smile on her face as she slept and he could not help but watch her sleep. When the door opened he feared it was one of the nurses that would demand that Momo get off the bed. But instead he saw that it was Tashinori Yagi. I would like to have a word with you. The skinny man said and Izuku raised his left hand up to his mouth, making a shushing sound. Tashinori nodded and moved closer to the opposite side. I understand that there is a 50 over 50 chance that you will be able to walk again. How would you like those odds to be 100% chance of being able to? He asked and Izuku knew what he was suggesting. Once again the greatest hero was offering to bestow all for one upon him. If it is able to heal someone of such an injury, then why didn't it work to heal you? Izuku asked with skepticism, glancing down at Tashinori's midsection of his chest. Shaking his head, Tashinori smiled. It does not work that way. I was injured as all might, but such an injury on any other would have been fatal. Tashinori explained and then slowly sat. I believe that the all for one would heal you faster than you spending months and probably a year relearning to walk again. Izuku considered that then glanced down at Momo, wondering if she would remain if it did take that long. She said she would and that concerned him. She had told him that she would leave the hero course if necessary to be with him. He could not allow her to do that, give up her dream of being a hero for him. He did not want to lose her. I have one condition. Even with this quirk, I remain as Almond. Izuku stated and Tashinori had to agree. Turning into All Might, he reached up and plucked a hair from his head and held it out to Izuku. With his left hand he took it and stared at All Might with curiosity. You have to eat it. All Might said. It will then bond with your DNA and then you will have all for one within you. He then turned and left, allowing for Izuku to decide if he would accept it or not. But he suspected that the young man would. Izuku stared at the golden long hair and then down at the sleeping face of Momo. So are you going to accept what All Might gave you? Momo asked quietly. She gazed up at him and he smiled guiltily, realizing that she had overheard the short conversation and the offer that All Might had made. Do not do it for me. I told you that I am willing to remain and be with you no matter how long it takes for you to be able to walk again. She said and Izuku shook his head. No, as much as I would like that, I cannot allow you to. You have your own life and your own dreams. If I do not accept All Might's offer, then I do not want you to stay. Izuku stared down at Momo and seeing her expression turned stern. I am not going anywhere regardless and if you think I am, you do not even know how stubborn I can be. Now eat that. 
Momo ordered and he smiled and put the hair into his mouth, swallowing it and with a look of disgust almost spit it out. Good, now go to sleep. She stated closing her eyes, moving her left hand over to his side and gently hugged him. Momo laid there not sleeping herself for a few moments, waiting for Izuku to fall asleep. When he did, she opened her eyes and looked at him. She had not told him that while he slept earlier, she had researched for neurosurgeons that were the best in the world, ready and willing to convince her parents to pay any of those surgeons to come and operate on Izuku if it became necessary. Outside the hospital room, All Might waited. He was sure that Izuku Midoriya would take the gift of all for one. Not because of the healing qualities of the power, but for the young woman that was with Izuku at that moment. Otherwise All Might suspected that he would not have accepted it, determined to do it himself. A type of trait that encompasses what a true hero embody. The Midoriya apartment, wanting to remain at the hospital. And Ko Midoriya decided that if anyone was to make Izuku want to succeed it would be Momo. The young woman impressed in Ko as she sat and pondered the future, wondering if Momo had other plans that involved her son. Closing her eyes from the longest day of her life, she started to drift off. The doorbell rang and she exhaled slowly. Standing she went to the door and opened it to find Katsuki Bakugo at the door. I would like to talk to you, Miss Midoriya, he said and she gestured for him to enter. She could see that the young man was red-eyed and exhausted. He stood before the shorter woman and closed his eyes. Then he swallowed visibly. I do not know if Best Genist or anyone else has told you. It is my fault that Izuku got hurt, he said to her, wanting her to lash out and strike him. Yell at him and take out some type of revenge against him. Nonsense, and Ko said, smiling and taking his hand to guide him over to one of the kitchen chairs. Best Genus told me that the man that threw his daughter off the balcony was insane. He had already threatened to do just that several times before you even arrived. You had no reason to believe that he would do such a thing to someone that he claimed he loved. She told him and Katsuki had heard all of that before, but he still blamed himself. He wanted someone to punish him for what had happened, and Ko could see that in his expression and she shook her head. Think about this, if you were the one that saw a deranged man throw a baby off the balcony and you could have been able, would you have done what Izuku did? She asked and he nodded. Yes I would, but I froze when that man threw her off the balcony. I was in shock, Katsuki said and he suspected with his explosion quirk he probably could have landed without seriously harmed himself. But Izuku did not hesitate, he jumped without thought or delay. So was best genist. He froze and did not react either, even though he is a seasoned hero and he was in shock just like you. And Ko told him and Katsuki's eyes widened. It was true. The head leader of the genius agency was standing next to him and did not even move. Only slowly tied Clemens in his strings and watched as Almondov without hesitation or delay to save the little girl. Katsuki slumped as he felt relieved that Izuku. Momo and Izuku's mother did not blame him for what had happened. Though he still somewhat blamed himself and no one would ever convince him that he was somewhat responsible. Within seconds he passed out in the chair and Inko suspected that the young Katsuki had not slept since the incident and was thoroughly exhausted. Standing she picked up a blanket and put it around Katsuki's shoulders and then went to her own room to sleep. She was just as tired as Katsuki was. Miracles. Near dawn, Momo moved from besides Izuku, not wanting the day nurse to discover that she was sleeping with Izuku. That was a serious no-no. Moving over to the chair she leaned back and pretended to be asleep. Then she saw it. Izuku's toes wiggled under the soft blanket and she stood. Izuku you moved your toes, Momo declared, pulling the blanket off them and staring with relief as his toes clenched and unclenched. I know they feel stiff and sore, Izuku said, not fully awake then his eyes opened wide and he glared down at his toes as they continued to move. Help me up, I want to try something, he stated, starting to sit up. Momo instantly stood and moved besides him, trying valiantly but failing to not seem too excited. Slowly and with her help his feet touched the floor. Oh that hurts, but I can feel them. I can feel my legs, he excitingly said as he leaned fully on his feet and with supreme effort took a step, then sat back down on the bed. Both laughed happily. Then with a small smirk, Momo decided to state the obvious. Perhaps before you try to walk again, you put on something where I cannot see your bare ass, Momo said with a mischievous grin, glancing back behind him. Though it is a really nice ass, she commented and he immediately pulled the blanket around his hips. Pervert, Izuku declared then smiled. Momo put her arms around his neck and leaned closer touching her lips to his and kissed him. Her tongue darted into his mouth and began to twist and twirl around his. She began to slowly push him back onto the bed, clasping his hand in hers and moving it towards her t-shirt-covered chest, desperately wanting him to touch her, caress her. Momo, he gasped out in a near whisper. She peered into his eyes and kept moving his hand towards her. I want to do this, Momo said, kissing him again and as his hand neared her peaks, she let out a small moan of pleasure. At that moment the door opened and she pushed herself upwards and let go of his hand. She glared at the open door and the older woman that stood there. Oops, the day nurse said as she backstepped and closed the door. 
Izuku began to laugh as he looked up at Momo, seeing her face begin to redden. Momo returned her glare down at him. It is not funny. A second later and that nurse would have seen you feeling me up. Momo stated feeling embarrassed. Then thinking about it, she started to laugh as well. But she also knew that soon she would get him to go to second base. Then eventually beyond that, recovery and rehabilitation. The doctors could not understand how Izuku could feel his legs or his toes. It had been determined by them. It would take months or even a year of rehab to accomplish such a feat. No pun intended. After thoroughly examining him five times it was decided that his condition was miraculous. But he still would have to relearn to walk and move. Though it would only take a few weeks perhaps a month then he would be able to walk and perhaps run normally. You know what that means. Momo asked as a rehab therapist helped Izuku stretch his legs and knees. He looked over at her, while wincing from the therapist moving his stiff legs. What does that mean? Izuku grunted in a strained voice, knowing Momo was trying to get his mind off the discomfort and pain. That in three months, two weeks and five days, my boyfriend is going to take me to my parents' ball, wear a tuxedo and dance with me. Momo told him and he winced and looked upwards at the therapist. Any chance you could slow my recovery so that I am unable to take my girlfriend to something so horrible? Izuku asked the woman and she chuckled, shaking her head negatively. Oh no I think I am having a relapse. Izuku said with a bit of pretend horror. Momo moved over besides him and stared down at him. She smirked. Not funny. Get it through your head. You are taking me. So get better or I will be really annoyed at you. Momo tapped her finger into his chest and he nodded. The therapist continued to help Izuku stretch and after a few more moments, told him it was time for him to try walking with the help of the bars, leaving so that Izuku could progress without the therapist's interference. The older woman left. As soon as the therapist left, Izuku did a handstand on the bars and smiled. Hey you be careful, Momo stated sternly as she watched him with his legs straight up in the air. He began to hand walk down the bars and then turned and came back. I had to do that. I have not done any almond training in almost two weeks. Skills get rusty if you do not practice. Izuku explained and returned to where his feet now were back on the floor, then began to gingerly walk down the short way, supporting himself with his hands and arms. So how is your classes going at UA? He asked Momo and she shrugged. She did not fully agree with him demanding that she return to school, only visiting after classes and on weekends. But he promised if she did, then he would take her out on a date when he could walk with only the support of a cane. Well enough, though everyone asks me constantly how you are doing. I tell them better each day. Momo replied and Izuku looked to make sure that no one was about to enter or no one would see. Without the support of the bars he walked over to her and her eyes widened. His face though was strained as he walked and after reaching her he sat down in a nearby chair. That was impressive, she said to him and he smiled up at her. That all for one is what is impressive. I think within a week and I may be able to move about with the help of a cane. Izuku said and Momo smiled. Good that means next week you are taking me out. Remember, you said if and when you can walk with the help of a cane. He would take me out on a date. One where we can be together and not worry about any interruptions. I think a nice dinner and perhaps some cuddling on a couch. Momo declared and he chuckled lightly, nodding. Neither had noticed that where he had gripped the bars with his right hand, was crushed partially. After embracing and Momo telling him she would be back tomorrow, Izuku sat in his wheelchair, waving at her. When she was out of sight, he wheeled inside and was supposed to go to his room and rest. Instead he headed for the exercise gym within the hospital. It was late in the day and no one used the gym that time of day. Sliding from the wheelchair to the weight bench, he moved the pin down to the bottom of the weights and began to pull downwards, wanting to do a nice 10 reps. He was determined to keep in shape. Then to his shock he stared at the weight. Removing his left hand, he pulled again one-handed. It felt weightless. He was stronger than he ever was before, though he wanted one more test to confirm it. Moving over to the punching bag, he leaned on a nearby barbell and swung his right fist back. With a resounding poof he struck the big heavy bag. His hand easily blew through the tough material and out the other side. Okay, I think this all for one has really increased my strength, Izuku said, removing his hand from the punching bag, returning to his wheelchair and after sitting he smiled. He could not wait to tell Momo tomorrow. One week later with the help of a cane in his right hand, Izuku walked down the sidewalk. His left hand was being held by Momo as she smiled happily, slightly swinging her and his joined hands back and forth. This is great, Momo stated as they neared their destination. At dinner three blocks from the hospital, from there they would go to his and his mother's apartment to sit on the couch and watch a movie. And Ko had told them that she would go shopping so that they could have a measure of privacy, but threatened them that she could return at any moment. So they needed to behave themselves. Entering the dinner, Momo felt happy until she looked over at three teenage street punks sitting at one of the tables. All three were wearing leather jackets and the way they were gawking at her made her feel nervous. Something wrong? Izuku asked and Momo returned her gaze back to him. No nothing. Let's find a table. Momo replied and they found one back to one side. 
When Izuku sat, she sat down next to him and held his hand tightly in hers, not wanting anyone to confuse the fact that she was here with him. She picked up a menu, handing one to him and began to look for something that sounded good. A second later one of the punks ambled over and placed his hands on the table, glaring down at Momo with a sneer. Hey baby, how about coming over and joining us? The punk said as he stared at Momo's impressive cleavage and gave a soft whistle. Momo shook her head and did not look up at the moron. Not interested so go away, I am here with my boyfriend. Momo stated as she gazed over at Izuku. She could see that he was not even upset or tense and she suspected that even though he needed the assistance of the cane to walk, he could still take out three punks without breaking a sweat. So what looks good to you honey? She asked Izuku when he shrugged. I think I want a cheeseburger. Izuku replied and the punk growled angrily, not liking being ignored, grabbing the menu out of her hand and tossing it away. Listen bitch, you are going to get up and come over to our table or there will be trouble. The punk said and Izuku casually reached over and put his hand on the punk's right hand, pushing his thumb into a nerve between the third knuckle, then pulled it upwards and towards him. The punk's eyes widened and he dropped to his knees as Izuku excreted more pressure on the nerve of the hand. The punk began to whimper as he felt pain flow from his hand up his arm. Oh, 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 let go. He cried as he stared up at Izuku with tears stinging his eyes. Now you will first apologize to her and then you and your friends will leave. Otherwise I will become upset and you will not like that, trust me. Izuku said calmly then reduced the pressure on the knuckle and the punk sighed with relief. I am sorry, the punk said and then Izuku released the hand and the punk beat a hasty retreat back to his friends. The other two stood and they left the dinner. Momo chuckled and watched them leave. That was incredible, Momo stated as she moved slightly closer to him and smiled coyly. She had briefly forgotten that Izuku may not be at 100%, but he was still had all of that training and he still knew how to fight. Let's forget lunch and head to your place and order a pizza, she suggested and he nodded. She stood and then he followed her, leaning heavily on the cane to get up. Outside to her dread the punks were waiting. Izuku gave a small smirk and let go of her hand. Step back, Izuku whispered as she did. He leaned on the cane with both hands and shook his head. You three must be the stupidest morons that ever lived. I would strongly suggest that you just leave. Otherwise you are about to experience some real pain. He said to the three punks and the biggest with red hair started to laugh. He then snapped his fingers and four other punks joined the three. Seven to one. With a sigh, Izuku rolled his eyes. Fine, let's get this over. The red-haired one lunged forward and Izuku jabbed the cane outward catching the brute in his stomach. Then spun it around and clobbered another punk across the face. Seeing a third pull a knife, Izuku flung the cane into his face and the third one dropped. When the fourth and fifth surged forward reaching for him, Izuku grabbed the one to the left's wrist and then with a slight bend of the hips sent the punk over and into the other. They collided and dropped to the ground. The other two stared at Izuku with shock as they glanced at their buddies now lying on the sidewalk, moaning and groaning from what their intended victim had done to them. The whole fight lasted only five seconds and the two were in too much shock to remain. Turning they bolted and Izuku bent over and retrieved his cane. Then Momo joined him and retook his left hand. Show off. You could have done that in less time couldn't you? Momo asked and Izuku smiled guiltily. She noticed that he had enjoyed that way too much. You miss doing that don't you? That is why you took it easy on them. As they walked away, leaving the punks to slowly rise and wonder how they had been beaten so quickly and effectively. I do miss it. It felt good to teach them a lesson. Izuku stated as they continued walking and soon they reached the train station. Once inside the railway car, Momo was tempted to once again sit on his lap, but knew that even though he was better, it would harm or hurt him for her to do that. Instead she sat next to him and knew in time he would be back to almost normal, though she was not too thrilled for him to return being Alman again. Even with the increased strength from All for One, she was concerned that he would get hurt or killed eventually and she wanted to have a future with him. With a smile she decided not to think about that and talk about something more pleasant. Remember to ask your mother to rent you a tuxedo for next month. You are still taking me to that ball. Momo reminded him and Izuku moaned with despair. It will not be that bad, trust me, she said and he nodded with acceptance. Back into the night. One week before the dreaded ball, Izuku put on his uniform. His legs were somewhat wobbly but he needed to do this. Of course he had not told Momo, fearing that she would be displeased with what he was about to do. Pulling on the mask, he exhaled. It felt good to be once again doing this, though he knew he had to take it easy. Running across a roof, he jumped into his amazement he had cleared one whole building and landed on another. He had discovered that with the one for all flowing through him he was stronger and faster than he was before. But he still believed that he did not like having a quirk, making his way across the roofs. He noticed that more of the thugs, punks and criminals had become bolder without him being out here so long. Glancing down at a small gathering of street punks he smiled. It was time to instill fear upon them. The next day the consequences of the night before struck. Sitting on a chair Izuku watched as Momo paced in front of him. Are you out of your mind? 
Momo stated as she finished walking one way and turned around, glared at him angrily and then proceeded to walk the other way. You have not fully healed yet and you pull this shit, she said to him and he shrugged. I miss doing that and I promise I did not do anything too dangerous, Izuku said and Momo grimaced, waving her hands in the air as she turned back towards him. That is not the point, you idiot. What if you had to fight? What if while running and jumping from one roof to another, your legs suddenly weakened and you fell? You are not up to 100% healed yet. I love you Izuku, but you need to think of those what-ifs before doing something so foolish again. Momo said in a pleading voice as she knelt before him, putting her hands on his knees, staring at him sadly. Okay, I won't do it again. I promise. Izuku told her and she exhaled in relief. She immediately moved upwards and straddled his lap and put her arms around his neck, while he slipped his own arms around her, leaning down slightly and she kissed him. No longer upset or angry, she smiled. So how did it feel to scare the street punks and lowlifes? Momo asked as he smiled. She could see the familiar spark within his eyes and though she was concerned that he could have been hurt or injured himself from going out too soon, he seemed more alive than he had been the last couple of months. It felt good. It is nice to know that they are still afraid of me. Izuku replied as he slowly moved his hands to her front slowly caressing her mounds. She leaned her head back and closed her eyes as she felt the pleasure of him fondling her chest. Oh that feels so good. Momo moaned softly as Izuku tenderly squeezed and touched her front. Leaning back towards him, she kissed him roughly, thrusting her tongue into his mouth and began to let it dance within. Then to her continued delight, he slipped his hands off her mounds and moved them down to her ass, squeezing them as they kissed. She moaned into his mouth as she felt him grip her ass cheeks. After a few more moments, we need to stop or I will not be able to, she stated in a shuddering gasp. Izuku removed his hands and exhaled sharply, closing his eyes to reduce his own arousal as she stopped grinding her hips back and forth on his lap. Finally able to control herself she climbed off his lap, feeling her cheeks begin to redden. She wanted him so badly and it was getting harder on her not to just do it, but she also knew that they both were not ready for that. Not yet anyhow. Real soon though, she had decided that they would be. With her own arousal reduced she smiled. So next week is the ball, you do have a tuxedo ready for rental right? She asked and he nodded. She had not told him yet and she would not until that night, but she had arranged for a hotel room at the Grand Plaza, five floors up from where the ball was being hosted. The next morning Izuku returned to the UA Hero 1 a class. He had been able to keep up with the academic side of the course, but the other he would have to really work hard to be at the level that everyone else in the class was at. Mr. Aizawa had wanted to drop him from the class and have him repeat it next year, but the whole class had voted if Izuku was dropped then they all would drop out. So it fell to Principal Nezu and the administrator decided that if Izuku could pass the academic portion of the class then he would not be dropped from the class. Thanks to Momo and Katsuki, Izuku passed all of the required tests, so he was only behind by four months of the hero training program, which he would have to make up during summer vacation. That did concern Momo. She had plans on taking him with her family on their yearly vacation. Sitting in his seat, Izuku smiled at his friends. In the privacy of the classroom, he no longer had to wear the hood or the mask. Welcome back Mr. Midoriya, Aizawa said as he looked at Izuku. You might want to thank your friends, because if it was up to me you would not be here right now. The hero slash teacher stated and then turned to the blackboard, smirking slightly as he began to write on the board. He personally did not want Izuku out of the class. He was essentially testing the other students to see if they all would support one of their own, which they did. Night of the ball, standing in front of the mirror in the bathroom, Izuku winced. The black tuxedo fit him perfectly. But to him he thought he looked like a waiter at some restaurant. With an audible exhale he left the bathroom. His mother clapped her hands and laughed upon seeing him. You look so handsome, Izuku. Inko declared and when the doorbell rang she gestured for him to answer it. With another exhale, he stepped over to the door and opened it. His eyes immediately bulged when he saw Momo. She was wearing a dark blue gown. It was strapless and her remarkable cleavage was easily seen. The gown was ankle length and fit her like a glove. Over here bare shoulders she wore a gold and dark blue see-through shawl that she had also draped over her wrist. So how do I look, Izuku? Momo asked with smile admiring him as much as he seemed to be admiring her. Inko moved closer and poked him in the side and he finally blinked. Wow, Izuku rasped out in wonder as he looked at Momo. You look absolutely beautiful, he declared and Momo smiled happily, then gestured at him with her right hand. You look pretty nice too. Shall we go? Jaspers is waiting downstairs in the Lincoln. Momo asked as she moved and took his right forearm with her left hand. Inko produced a camera and blocked their path out of the apartment. Not until I get some pictures. Inko stated as she rose the camera and began to snap away, wanting as many photos of the couple as possible. After ten shots of flashes, Izuku moved around his mother and almost dragged Momo out of the apartment, riding the elevator to safety. 
at the ball. Momo had her arms around and behind Izuku's neck, while he had his on her waist. This was their third waltz and seventh slow dance together. And not that they actually did the steps, more like that they were just spending the time looking at each other. Twice some other man had asked to cut in and Momo declined them instantly, not wanting anyone else to dance with her or touch her. This is wonderful and I really love that you are here. Momo said as she moved closer and held Izuku tightly to her. Now they barely moved their feet as she closed her eyes. When the music ended both were thirsty, so they left the dance floor and while she waited, he went to get them a drink. While she waited a hand tapped her bare shoulder. May I have this dance? A familiar voice asked and Momo looked towards the source of the voice. She exhaled and shook her head. Sorry Danny. I am not dancing with anyone but Izuku tonight. Momo said to Daniel Fredman as he smiled at her. Oh come on Momo, you and I used to date not too long ago. Danny said with a certain pompous air as he admired her outfit and form. One date that lasted about half an hour and it was set up by our fathers. I also remember that I ended it when you tried to grope my ass. Momo stated as she returned to wait for Izuku, seeing him standing in line at the bar. It is such a nice ass. Daniel said as he whistled and his eyebrows raised as he glared at her ass. Then he glanced over towards Izuku and he shook his head. You cannot be seriously turning me down for that nobody. I mean look at him, he is a peasant in a rented tux, he said as he laughed gesturing at Izuku. Besides your and mine fathers believe that we should be together. He then scowled when Izuku walked back towards them, carrying two cups. Daniel immediately stepped in front of Momo blocking Izuku from delivering the drinks. Excuse me, Izuku said as he tried to step by the older Daniel who remained in front of Momo. Then he turned his head towards Izuku and smiled crookedly. Why don't you just leave peasant? Let Momo be with a real man, one that is suited for her and is far superior to you. Daniel said as he looked down at Izuku, then turned back towards Momo and suddenly felt a fist slam into his jaw. Stepping back he glared at Momo, not hurt but embarrassed. Do not say that to my Izuku. He is no peasant and is a better man than you would ever hope to be. Momo said as she attempted to move around Daniel's and he grabbed her wrist and snarled. Bitch, you hit me. Daniel stated angrily as he raised his hand to slap her. Then someone caught his wrist and squeezed. Pain exploded through his arm as he stared back at Izuku. He was holding the arm one-handed and had a calm expression on his face. He squeezed harder and Daniels dropped to his knees, his face contorted into an expression of pain, staring at his wrist clasped by the smaller young man. Let go. His voice etched in pain. Izuku leaned closer. Never try to hit my Momo again or I will rip your arm off. Do you understand? Izuku asked in a whisper and Daniels nodded. Now stand up and go away. He ordered Daniels and then released the man's wrist. Daniels immediately stood and walked away, cradling his wrist. Izuku moved closer to Momo and took her hand that she was shaking back and forth. Momo I have told you several times, unless you have padding or gloves on never to hit with a closed fist. He took her sore hand and shook his head, gently examining it. Does not seem to be broken. He stated and Momo smiled lightly. I forgot. He just pissed me off and I needed to hit that pompous asshole. Better man. Huh. Momo said with flair. You are a hundred times better than he is. She added as he finished looking at her sore hand. He then kissed it and she giggled. Then her expression became serious. Her decision now made. Izuku let's leave and go somewhere else. Momo said as she took his hand with her other, non-sore hand. He looked at her with curiosity as she led him out of the ballroom, towards the elevators. Momo where are we going? The exit is that way. Izuku asked and Momo smiled seductively, pulling the card key out of her cleavage and holding it up. Yes, but the hotel room I arranged is this way. I want to spend the night with you, Momo said and Izuku stared at her in shock. I think it is time we became more intimate and have sex. She told him and then pushed for the elevator and once inside she turned towards him. That is if you want to. Her voice sounding small and unsure and he put his arms around her. I love you Momo and if this what you want then I am ready. Izuku said and Momo leaned closer and kissed him, whispering in his ear that she loved him too. Taking him to the hotel room. Near dawn, Momo looked over at Izuku. He was sleeping soundly. With a wry smile she touched his face and was tempted to awaken him for another time. The whole night consisted of having sex repeatedly, a series of doing it, then resting some and doing it again. They both basically passed out around 4 a.m. She was also tempted to call down to the front desk and tell them to extend their stay for another night, wanting to not leave the bed until tomorrow. But she suspected that both of them are already in trouble. They had broken their curfews by several hours and by now unless her parents and his mother were oblivious to facts, then they would know that she and Izuku had misbehaved. At that moment she did not care. She just wanted to be with him. You should be asleep. Izuku commented as he pulled her closer and she snuggled deeper into his arms. I am not tired. Any chance of another time? Momo asked, seeing him smile at her. Even though his eyes were closed she could tell he had just rolled his eyes at her. We do not have any more of those. Izuku indicated with his hand towards the nightstand and she shrugged lightly. She pecked him on the lips and his eyes opened slightly. 
I can make as many as we need. Momo told him as she removed her one arm from him and created another one, pulling it out of her other arm and holding it in front of his eyes. She had bought the first box, then read the combinations of molecular ingredients so she could make more if she needed them. With a sigh, he leaned closer and kissed her and they were soon using one of the things again. Sad late morning. Momo kissed Izuku passionately outside his apartment building. Jasper's was not looking, paying attention to straight ahead. As the couple parted, Izuku looked upwards at where his and his mother's apartment is. I bet I am so grounded. Izuku stated and then smiled. Momo returned the smile and nodded. Then before she released him to go face her own trouble, they both said, I love you. She quickly punched him in the arm. Jinx you owe me a coke. Momo stated and kissed him again. Watching the car pull off, Izuku squared his shoulders and entered the apartment building. Once inside, his mother met him at the door and he was lectured for an hour. At the same time Momo was also lectured, but her father was not acting completely rational, stating that he was going to take a shotgun and force Izuku to account for his actions. It took both Momo and her mother two hours to convince him that Momo was too young to get married at that moment. So all in all, they both expected worse. Saturday night, Izuku pulled on his new uniform, the same one that he had worn a week ago. The first one was damaged and had blood stains on it. His blood, rolling his shoulders he glanced over at his mother. You be careful, Inko stated as she watched her son slip out the window. Shaking her head she chuckled, thinking it funny that earlier when he talked to Momo on the phone he never mentioned to his girlfriend that he was going out as Almond tonight. She suspected that Momo was not fully ready for her boyfriend to once again be Almond. Going to the open window, her eyes widened. Izuku had not climbed down. He had jumped and landed easily on the lower roof, ten stories down as if one jumped off a step. Then he zipped away into the night, with his wing cape flowing behind him. Tonight for Izuku was necessary. Street crime had risen and some of the street thugs and punks had gotten bolder. They needed a good dose of fear to drive them back from preying on others. Landing on a rooftop he smiled. It felt really good to be out again. Though he knew Momo would be sorely pissed that he was out again. But his legs were at least 90% healed and stronger than ever. Seeing his first victims he exhaled and jumped. Landing among a large group of street punks that had gathered near an alley. They all parted and spread out staring at the new arrival that had suddenly appeared from nowhere. You all are not planning on any mischief tonight, Almond said in his menacingly harsh voice, glaring around him with those red glowing eyes. Several of the street punks held up their hands towards him and shook their heads. Good. Now I suggest you all go home. With a whirl of his wing cape he jumped upwards, landing on the 15-story rooftop and disappearing into the shadows. Knowing that all of the punks were now properly terrified, three more appearances. That included two muggings and the rumors of his actual return was embedded on streets, easily hefting a mugger with one hand against a wall. Almond glared up at the easily 12-50-pound man. The mugger's quirk was one that made him heavier and for the mugger to have someone lift him one-handed high into the air was extremely intimidating. What are you? The mugger gasped his eyes widening with panic. As his feet dangled a good foot off the concrete, Almond chuckled and for the mugger that was worse than the silence a few seconds ago. Fuck you are that creature Almond. The mugger stated as stared down into the red glowing eyes and the white fangs of the demon or vampire. He was not sure of which, but both were not something he ever wanted to see. Feeling himself being moved over to a nearby signpost, the creature bent the metal around him, securing him to that spot. Then with a flapping of his wings, Almond soared upwards and landed on a roof. The mugger watched as it disappeared. Sitting in her room, Momo was starting her two weeks of being grounded, though the punishment was not really being enforced. All she had to do was wait for her father to go to work and she was essentially free. Her mother did not enforce the punishment, believing that Momo was old enough to make her own decisions and if she wanted to have sex with her boyfriend, then Momo was responsible enough to do it. Though her mother did have a long talk with her about safe sex and the use of condoms, it was extremely embarrassing for Momo, but manageable if it meant that she could still be with Izuku. Flipping through her phone, she spotted something that made her really annoyed. Almond sightings. Oh you are in so much trouble Izuku. She scowled as she stood and went down the stairs. Mom I am going over to see Izuku. I will be back before dad is. Momo said towards the living room and her mother waved. If he is not grounded, see about having him come over for dinner one of these nights. Her mother said at the departing Momo. With a small wave, Momo stepped out of the house and had Jaspers take her to Izuku's home. Even though it was Sunday she knew that she had at least six hours before her father came home from the office. Plenty of time to scold Izuku for disobeying her. Sleeping in from the night of once again letting the punks and lowlifes know that Almond was around. Izuku heard the door open and then felt someone sit on the edge of the bed. He knew instantly who it was and why she was here. So how much trouble am I in? He said to the pillow. The lot. Momo's voice said and then she laid down next to him. Izuku put his arm around her and she snuggled back closer, feeling him press against her back. Though I suppose I can forgive you for being such an idiot. She closed her eyes and smiled. 
It felt good to lie there with him and though the door was open and Inko kept glancing in to make sure that the two were not misbehaving. Momo really felt comfortable. He kissed the back of her neck and she exhaled sharply. They could not have sex but it did not mean that they could not do other things. Reaching back she pulled his blanket over her and then slipped her hand inside his pajama pants. Clasping him, I am wearing sweatpants so you can do what I am doing to you, you can do the same to me. She whispered and felt his right hand move down inside her own pants. She rubbed him as he did the same to her and after about half an hour both knew that they would have to use the bathroom to clean up. So one at a time, they did. With a sigh of contentment, Momo waited for Izuku out in the living room, relieved that his mother had no idea what they had just done in his bed. When he came out dressed she patted the cushion next to her and he sat. There is a rumor that on Monday Mr. Aizawa is going to tell us that we are heading for a special training session next week. I hear it is a week long and out of the city. She told him and he nodded. He had heard the same rumor. She leaned closer. Maybe we will get a chance to be intimate again. She whispered and Izuku blushed slightly. Momo checked the clock and knew she could only stay for another two hours. Otherwise her father would know that she had sneaked out while being grounded. On Monday, sitting at her desk she smiled over at Izuku. Momo was overjoyed that there had been no sightings of Alman Sunday night and she suspected that Izuku had not gone out again. She did not know that he instead had spent the time trying to get better with his new abilities. Izuku wanted to up his game and get stronger. One for all was not a reliable quirk. Yes it gave him increased strength and speed, but what he had seen and knew about All Might, he decided that he was not even at 10% of the potential he could have, which required him to practice, practice and practice. Mr. Aizawa then told them about the upcoming week-long training session that they all would be attending, having Tenya Ida hand out permission forms for their parents to sign. 